Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about the top 25 English verbs by frequency. So let's get into it. Be is the first English verb. Be refers to existence. I want to be an astronaut. I think you would be a great person for this job. Be yourself. Let's be friends. I could have been a writer if I wanted to be. The next verb is have. I have a dog. I have an idea. What do you have? How many do you have? How much money do you have? Do you have any friends? <laughs> How have you been? Have you seen my mom? I can't find her. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. The next verb is do. Do you want some pizza? Do you have a dog? Do I want to give any dip to do? Do be do be do if you're Frank Sinatra. I do the things that you do better. <laughs> say, 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 say what you want. Say my name, say my name. Say you love me. Do you know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? The next verb is get. Get a life, get a job, get a haircut, get a better suit. Stevens. <laughs> what you got. I could have gotten a pony, but I went with a lizard instead. I'm getting tired. That's not true. The next verb is make. Make a cake. Make your mother proud. Someone outside is making a strange face at me through the window at the moment. That is a true story. <laughs> make a living through legitimate means. The next verb is go. Go big or go home. I'm going to the beach. You should go to the beach. You should go to the forest. <laughs> go to a baseball game with me. Past tense of go is went. I went spelunking on my holiday. <laughs> the next word is no. This is an interesting word because no is actually not commonly used in the progressive tense. No is commonly used in present tense uh, to refer to your mental state or your emotional state. So we don't really say I am knowing really, but we can say I, I know. I know the answer. What do you know about this issue? He couldn't have possibly known the location of the treasure. How many people do you know? I knew it. <laughs> the next verb is take. Take a cake. <laughs> take a break. Take yourself to bed. You should take a vacation. Have you ever taken a bath? The next word is see. We'll see. I'll see you later. Uh, the next verb is come. Come is the next verb. Please come to my house. Come to a party. I'm going to come over to your place later. The next word is think. Think. I think you're great. He thinks pizza is the best food. I'm thinking about lunch. I'm thinking about coffee. What are you thinking about? I've been thinking about something. That's a Hanson song. Uh, have you ever thought about the meaning of life? Look, look is the next verb. Please look at the camera. Look over there, look over here. Look, a dog. Look at your mom. Oh my gosh, would you look at that? Look at the time. <gasps> look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's actually a bird. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> is it me you're looking for? Hello. Next word is want. Want. What do you want? I want food. How many coffees have you ever wanted? I wanted to go to the dry cleaners this morning, but I ran out of time. That's true. The next verb is give. Give me a break. I'm going to give you a raise, Stevens. I'm giving you the axe. Fired. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off these like you can't fire. I have given you everything I have. Go unto Mordor, Frodo. I could have given you the world, and instead I gave you a carpet. Use is the next word. Use. Don't use a pen. I like using chocolate when I make food. <laughs> Are you using me for my brain? Next is find. We could have found buried treasure last weekend. I'm finding Nemo. <laughs> find things on the internet with Google. Find English words and phrases at EnglishClass101.com. Yeah! Tell is the next verb. Tell me a story. Tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. Tell me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm told that you are an extremely good opera singer. I'm telling you to leave. Tell lies every day.
Don't tell lies. The next word is ask. Ask. Please pronounce this correctly. It is not ax. Many native speakers make this pronunciation mistake and it really bothers me. Ask. Ask me about my collection of rare donut recipes. Ask your mom about her life. Why don't you ask your boss to the party? How about you ask your coworker for some advice about this issue? I should have asked for help, but I didn't. The next verb is work. Work is work. I'm working now. Seem. To seem. The weather seems nice today. He seemed a little angry this morning. Feel is the next word. Feel. I feel happy. Feelings. How does it feel? Feel. Feel. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Try. Oh my gosh. Try is the next word. Oh, I'm trying my best. <laughs> I try every day to work very hard. Have you ever tried ramen? I tried ramen yesterday and it was really good. Do you try to exercise every day? I'm trying to sleep. Go away. The next verb is leave. Leave. Leave me alone. Leave your doors unlocked. Don't leave your doors unlocked. I have never left a hot air balloon without first taking a picture. <laughs> the next verb is call. Call is the next verb. Give me a call. Please call me later. Call me maybe. Call your mom on her birthday every year. She'll be happy. Call, call. <laughs> if you're a seagull, have you ever called the wrong number? Have you ever called a dog by another dog's name? <laughs> and that's the end. That was the most fun episode I've ever done, I think. So those are 25 English verbs, some very, very common English verbs. Give them a try. We've talked about a lot of different grammar forms and a lot of different ways you can use these verbs. So please practice them. And if you like this video, please be sure to comment. Please, please, please be sure to subscribe to, we'll have a button around here somewhere, maybe many buttons. Uh, so please subscribe to us and check out more content as it becomes available. Thanks very much and we'll see you again soon. Bye. S surfed. <laughs> Look at that. Do you want to build a snowman? Leave your babies outside of the movie theater. <laughs> Leave your attitude at the door. <laughs> there are a lot of verbs in English. Okay. Oh, do, 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 do. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about 10 phrases that you always want to hear. So let's begin. You win. The first phrase is you win, you win. If you hear the phrase you win, it means you have won something. You are probably going to receive something for free. Woo! That's a very happy thing, right? You want to get free things. Congratulations, you win a car. Yay! Here are the keys to your new car. Great, thank you. I brought you something special. This is exciting to hear because it means this little something special is like, oh, I thought only of you, so I brought you this. I brought you something special. Really? Thank you. Mm. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you is nice. You can use this with your friends, your family members, your partner, whoever. I miss you shows that you want to meet the other person. Probably you haven't, you haven't seen them as much as you would like to, so you can say, I miss you, I miss you. Call your husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever on the phone, maybe. You haven't seen them for a long time. You can say, I miss you. I miss you too. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. This means someone else is going to clean up your house for you or clean up something for you. I would be very happy to hear this phrase right now because my apartment is a disaster because I'm only there to sleep. <laughs> so maybe you've had a long day at work or a long day doing something. You come home and somebody else has offered to do this for you. So take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. And you can reply, really? Thank you so much. I'm going to relax. The budget is unlimited. The next phrase that you always want to hear is the budget is unlimited. The budget is unlimited. This could be at work. This could be a budget, a personal budget, maybe. But it just means there's no limit to the budget. You can spend as much money as you want. Woohoo! Very exciting. 
So let's see, in a business context, perhaps you have this new client who's going to give you a lot of money to build a new house or something. Maybe you're building houses, that's your project. Your boss comes to you. The budget for this project is unlimited. Really? Let's go crazy. Dun, dun, dun. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Yeah, this is a phrase that you probably are very excited to hear. It means you are going to receive extra money from your job at the end of the month. Woohoo! Very exciting, extra money. Maybe you'll hear this from your boss or your manager or maybe your coworker at work or maybe you see it in an email. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Really? I'm gonna use mine to buy a new car. Really? I'm gonna use mine to go out on a date. Really? I'm gonna use mine to get a new fish. You did a great job. You did a great job. You did a great job is something um, you'll probably hear from, well, I don't know, you could hear this from pretty much anybody. Anytime you've done a good job, someone will congratulate you or tell you their opinion with this phrase. You did a great job. You finished a project at work and your boss says, you did a great job. Nice. Thank you so much. It was really fun. Or thank you. Just, just say thank you. You look great today. You look great today. The other person thinks that your physical appearance is nice today. Don't think about the today part, you know, just, just, just take the compliment. Be like, oh, really? Thank you so much. You look great today. Oh, thank you so much. I got a new haircut. Thank you so much. I, I got enough sleep. Yeah. You were right. You were right. This means that um, something that you said in the past was correct. And it, everybody likes to be correct, I think. I saw that movie that you recommended. You were right. It was really good. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Don't be like, I know. Or, yeah, I knew I was right. Don't do that. Just say, oh, good. I'm glad. You're an excellent cook. You're an excellent cook. This is a nice compliment, especially for someone who enjoys cooking. If you say, you're an excellent cook, it means you enjoyed their food. So, let's see. At a dinner party, for example, you're an excellent cook. This food is delicious. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And that's the end. So those are things that you want to hear. So keep in mind, it's nice for you to hear these things, but other people also want to hear them too. So compliment other people. Tell them that they are awesome if they are awesome. Tell them that they have good skills in whatever it is that they like to do. People like to be complimented. People want to be liked. So write them a message or say something nice to them. Yes, leave us a comment. We have a great team of people doing all these amazing things. So tell them how much you love them. So thanks so much for joining us for this week's lesson. We will see you again next time. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not already uh, so that you don't miss out on any fun stuff. Thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> I guess I don't really need to do that. <gasps> I'm so sorry. Amped all the time. Japanese bug battle. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about the top 25 English nouns. These are the top 25 most commonly used nouns in English, so let's get started. The first noun is the word name. Name, of course, is used in common questions like, what's your name, my name is, and so on. My favorite actor's name is Harrison Ford, something like that. Say my name, say my name. The next word is time. Time is used, of course, to express the point in the day. It's used in questions like, what time is it? Can you tell me what time it is? I don't have any time lately, if you're really busy. Have you any time? It's time for my favorite show, House of Cards. Kevin Spacey is cool. The next noun is man. Please be careful, man is one of those words that has an irregular plural form. When you need to use the plural of the word man, you should say men. Do not say mans. It's very funny, but uh, don't say it. Who's that man? Or what's up man? You can use man with men or women, interestingly enough. The next word is woman. Woman also has an irregular plural form. Please say women when referring to more than one woman, not women's or woman's. <laughs> Even though the, uh, the singular and the plural form of women and woman have the same spelling at the beginning, W-O-M, the pronunciations are different. Woman, women. So watch out for that when you say this. Pretty woman. The next word is person, person. You can use it to refer generally to either a man or a woman. Please be careful, person's uh, plural form becomes people. When you want to talk about another culture, for example, you can say such and such country's people or the people in that country speak blah 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 language. The next word is thing, generally an inanimate object, something that is 
that just doesn't move like a water bottle or, you know, a sweater. A thing. You can use it when you don't know the word for something. So thing is very, very useful. What is this thing? Uh, I like many things, for example. Where the Wild Things Are, the movie that's already out that I totally knew about. <laughs> the next word is mother. Mother is the person, the woman who gave birth to you. Isn't that exciting? Mother is commonly shortened to mom or mama or mommy, ma, madre if you speak Spanish, mum, mamba if you're me, <laughs> mamacita. The next word is day. Of course, day is used in all of the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, time period when the sun is out, the day or the daytime. <laughs> Have a nice day. The next word is world. World just refers to the entire planet Earth. Well, I like to travel all around the world, or I like trying foods from all around the world. In the world of science, this is an upcoming technology. Or in the world of literature, he's one of the most famous authors. So world can be used to refer just, just to um, kind of a more specific hobby or a specific interest or just a specific person's life. War of worlds. Father. Father is your dad. Um, other, other common words used for father are dad, papa, pop, daddy, pa, faja. <laughs> I use that one with my dad. While mother is used to refer to kind of like nurturing kind of like, you know, the earth or things that like kind of give life to others. Father, at least in my mind, there's kind of this image of um, someone who's a little bit more strict in your life. The next word is sister. A female sibling is your sister. You can also use sister for a female person that you feel very, very close with. So I might call my female friend, who's I'm very close to, my sister. My brother likes to shorten it to sis. You might also hear sista as well if you are silly. Sister. Whoopi Goldberg was in a famous movie called Sister Act. The next word is brother. Brother is a male sibling. Uh, you can also use brother to refer to a close male friend. Common variations of brother are brother, bro, bra, brosy, broski. Depending on what kind of person you are, you can choose to use any number of those. Like, I might sarcastically say to my friend, cool story, bro, <laughs> like if he's told me a story that's not very exciting. In Mario, for example, the name of the Mario games is actually Super Mario Brothers, but Brothers is abbreviated as B-R-O-S, Super Mario Bros. Yeah, just be careful about your use of bro, because it, it sounds a little bit like a college-age boy. Uh, that's kind of, the, kind of the feeling of the word bro. Oh, brother, where art thou? <laughs> the next word is daughter. Daughter is a female child. Daughter. Do you have a daughter? I have a daughter. I don't have a daughter. Taken. <laughs> it's son. A male child is someone's son. Son, S-O-N, is pronounced exactly the same as S-U-N, son. What are you talking about, son? <laughs> the next word is I, E-Y-E, -E, I. Your eye is the round thing that you use to see with. Eye is used in a lot of expressions and idioms in English, as in, I've got my eye on you, meaning I'm watching you. Or keep your eye out for something, meaning please look for something or please pay close attention. I'm waiting for something to happen. The next word is hand, body parts. Give me a hand or can I give you a hand means please help me or can I help you mm, to give someone a hand. Head, this thing on the top of your body, your head. We use head to refer to the top of things, as in the head of a company, the head of a group, the head of the line. So whoever is first in the line, whoever is top at the company, they are the head. If you have a head, dance. <laughs> if you have a head, then dance, woo! The next word is foot. This is another word that has a weird plural form. One foot, two feet. Foot, interestingly enough, foot is used, of course, to refer to your body part. Uh, a foot also is a unit of measurement. If you are from America, or I believe one other country in the world uses this system. Sorry, we're not on board with the metric thing in America. But foot uh, is 12 inches, about this long. So if head refers to the top of things, foot is used to refer to the bottom of things. If you've written a paper on Microsoft Word, for example, um, at the very bottom of the page, there will be a space called the footer, meaning the bottom, where you can put little notes uh, to your reader. The next word is place. Place can be used to refer generally to a location, commonly to refer to friends' homes or apartments. Let's go to your place, or can we have the party at your place? Is a little bit more natural than, I want to go to your house. <laughs> The next word is work. 
be careful about using work as a noun and work as a verb. Your work refers to your job, your responsibilities, your tasks at your office or your workplace. You can use it in a phrase like, I have a lot of work to do, or please help me with my work. I like to go to work. <laughs> it can be used to just refer to anything artistic in general. So it can mean, it can be a painting, it can be a building, it can be a sculpture, it can be, I don't know, whatever. Anything artsy can be referred to as work, as in, I really like that new work by that artist, or did you see so-and-so's new work? Twerk? The next word is week. Uh, week refers to the seven-day period that we have decided is one week here in the modern world. Commonly used in expressions relating to your activities, as in, I go to the gym once a week, or I see my friends twice a week, or I have to work every day of the week. Monday through Friday is referred to as uh, weekdays. Saturday and Sunday, weekend. Next word is month. Month is, um, there are 12 months in a year. My favorite month, depending on which country I'm in, I generally like uh, autumn months, like uh, October. I think I usually like the month of October. September, October is good because it's not too hot, not too cold, and Halloween is coming, and that's my favorite holiday. Hannah Month Tana. The next word is year. Year refers to the time period, usually 365 days. There are leap years where there is an extra day in the month of February. What year were you born? Or I was born in the year of the rabbit, uh, de depending on which calendar you like to use. It can be used to introduce a story, as in many years ago, I went to blah, blah, blah. Year of the platypus. <laughs> Next is the word one, the number one, the first number, <laughs> one of something. To refer to somebody who you loved and who left your life, you can say, oh, he or she was the one that got away. The next one is the word <laughs> number, but it can be used in a number of expressions, like what's your phone number, or give me your number, or here's my number. It means phone number, but we don't always say phone. That's the end of the top 25 most common nouns in the English language. Maybe you've used some of these, you probably have. Keep them in mind and uh, have fun with them. Thanks very much for watching this episode and we'll see you again soon. Bye. If you have a head, woo! <laughs> Do you like trees? Yeah! Yeah! Right. Matt. Yeah, vamos a la playa. Now we're going to the beach. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're gonna be talking about 20 travel phrases that you should know. So let's go. Do you have any recommendations? The first phrase is, do you have any recommendations? This is great to use when you get to a restaurant where you don't know what the food is, you don't know anything about the local cuisine, or you're just feeling a little bit adventurous. You can ask the waitstaff, do you have any recommendations? How much is this? How much is this? This is useful when you're out shopping or when you're in a restaurant and the price is not clearly marked or something is not clear to you. So you can ask, how much is this? Usually when you point to something, I would recommend like pointing to the menu or pointing to an item. How much is this? I'd like this. You can point to something and say, I'd like this. Uh, if you want to say, I'd like uh, one, for example, I don't know, you're getting beer. I'd like one of these. If, however, you're in a situation where you can't point, you can say, I'd like 10 of the blah, blah, blah. I'd like 10 of the blue t-shirts, please. Can I try this on? Is useful when you're shopping for clothes. So you find something that you'd like to try, just ask the staff, can I try this on? You can just say, I want to try this on, if you like. Do you speak English? You might get asked this phrase. So you should say, if you're watching this video, you should probably say yes, or you can say yes a little if you're not feeling very confident. If you're watching this video and you're understanding this part and you say no, then uh, things, that's a little strange. So, I have a reservation. Usually the staff will greet you and you can say, I have a reservation. Hello, I have a reservation. It's at seven o'clock. The name is Alicia. Usually we say the name is, or it's under, meaning the reservation is under my name, or um, it's for name, or uh, it's in name. Water, please. Depending on which country you're from, water may or may not automatically be brought to your table when you're at a restaurant. If you would like more water, however, you can say water, please. To make it a little more polite, I would like wave at the wait staff and say, could I please have some more water? Do you take credit cards? Do you take credit cards? In case you're not sure if the shop that you're in will accept credit cards or debit cards, you can ask them, 
do you take credit cards? So it doesn't mean, do you take, meaning, are you going to take my card? But this take means, do you accept credit cards? This isn't what I ordered. So if you're at a restaurant, you order steak and you get lobster instead. You can look at it and go, ah, oh, this isn't what I ordered. Be careful though. Say this politely. If you look at the wait staff and you say, this isn't what I ordered, they're gonna be like, I don't know, just be a nice customer. Excuse me, but I don't think this is what I ordered or this isn't what I ordered. Can you please check? Could we have the menu, please? If for some reason you don't receive a menu when you come to the table, you can, again, just wave at a, a member of the staff and say, could we have the menu, please? Could you give me a discount? Could you give me a discount means uh, I would like a cheaper price, essentially. So it depends on which country you're in. If haggling or bargaining, meaning uh, talking to the seller to try to reduce the price. My family didn't bargain, we didn't haggle, so I don't haggle. It depends on you and your culture, but uh, just, yeah, just be, be aware of the culture that you're in and the place that you're in before you ask this question. Do you have any vegetarian dishes? Ah, this is useful. Some people uh, have specific eating requirements or eating needs, maybe food allergies, for example. You can replace vegetarian with the specific dietary requirement that you have. Do you have any vegan dishes? Do you have any gluten-free dishes? Do you have any low-fat dishes? Do you have any low-carb dishes? Do you have any fish-free dishes? Do you have any... Could you take a picture of me, please? If you are in a location where you would like to take a picture, but you don't want to do a selfie or you don't have a selfie stick or whatever, you want someone else to take a picture of you, a stranger that you don't know, you can ask them, could you take a picture of me, please? Or excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of me, please? I'm allergic to blah, blah, blah. If you have a food allergy or even uh, an allergy to a medicine, this is the phrase you can use to explain that. I'm allergic to wheat or I can't eat wheat, for example. Is the Wi-Fi free? Meaning, can I use the Wi-Fi free of charge? Keep in mind, some places have a, a, a password that you have to ask the staff for. So you can say, is the Wi-Fi free? If they say yes, you can then follow that up with, can I have the password? I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. So when you go to a restaurant, you have an option between smoking and non-smoking sections. The staff will say smoking or non-smoking. You can say, I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. Quite honestly though, the most natural response is just to say non-smoking. <laughs> Could I get a map? Maybe it's uh, a map of the subway system for the city that you're in, or maybe it's a map of the area around your hotel. You could say, could I have a map as well? Could I have the check? You're finished at your cafe, you're finished at the restaurant, and it's time to leave, it's time to pay. So you say to the waitstaff, excuse me, could I have the check? Another more common expression perhaps is, excuse me, check please. You might also hear bill. Excuse me, can I have the bill? Where is the bathroom? Very important question. If you're traveling in America, we don't really use the word toilet or washroom very much. We use bathroom or restroom to talk about um, toilet facilities. Excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Uh, or excuse me, I'm looking for the bathroom or I'm looking for the restroom. Is this the train for blah, blah, blah? Or or is this the train that goes to blah, 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 to confirm with someone that I'm indeed on the correct train line? If I say, is this the train bound for San Francisco? You can use that to check if you're correct. So that's the end. Those are 20 travel phrases that you can use when you're traveling in an English speaking country. Give them a try. I hope that they go well for you. Of course, there are many different variations on these themes, so be sure to experiment a little bit. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Top Words, and we will see you again soon. Bye! The things that I do before I travel to a country where I cannot speak the language, I actually learned numbers. Okay. Fiend. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia, and today we're going to be talking about the top 25 English phrases. So let's get started. The first phrase is hello. Hello, of course, is used as a greeting. You can greet your friends, you can greet your coworkers, your family with this phrase just by saying hello. Hey, hi, what's up? Hello. Sup? Yo. Pretty much any time of day you can use hello. Hello? 
The next phrase is good morning. Good morning is used as a greeting in the morning. You can kind of feel when morning ends for you. Good morning is nice and polite. Or even just morning with your close friends or close co-workers. The next phrase is good night. Good night is fine. We don't use this to greet other people. We use it when we're saying goodbye to other people at night. Uh, family members, particularly mothers and fathers, to say good night to their children before they put them to bed. You can say it to your friend in a text message or in an email if you've been talking for a while. Good night. So the next word to talk about is goodbye. Uh, use it when you say goodbye to your friends, when you leave your friends. Goodbye. Bye, of course. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace out. That's another way to say goodbye. Okay, the next phrase is I'm plus your name. Of course, this is a way to introduce yourself. You can use I'm, in my case, Alicia. I'm Alicia to introduce yourself in any situation. New friend, I'm Alicia. Okay, the next phrase is what's your name? What's your name is used to ask someone else what their name is. So, what is your name sounds a bit... Try to use what's your name. If you forget someone's name, you can say sorry, what's your name? Or sorry, what's your name again? Next phrase is nice to meet you. Nice to meet you anytime you meet someone new. Nice to meet you is fine. Good to meet you is a little more casual. Great to meet you sounds very excited. Pleasure to meet you sounds like uh, maybe a formal situation or a business context. Okay, the next phrase is how are you? How are you is an, it's just a friendly way to check in with the other person. You can use it with friends, your family, your coworkers, maybe even your boss to a certain degree. Uh, how are ya? How you doing? The next phrase is, I'm fine, thanks, and you? Uh, if you saw English in three minutes, we talked a lot about this phrase. Uh, instead of, I'm fine, thank you, and you, say, I'm good, thanks, how are you? Just shorten it, make it a little bit more natural. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. How are you? Not so good. How are you? Okay. And so on. So when someone says, how are you? Offer, I usually say, I'm good. This week, I blah, blah, blah. Give some information about what you've been up to. Maybe a hobby, something that you did recently, an event, something interesting you saw, whatever. People want to make that connection with you and it's a good chance for you to continue speaking. The next word is please. Please is a polite phrase used when you want something from someone else. You can use this as a response when someone offers you something, like in a restaurant, for example. Would you like more water? Would you like something to drink? Oh, please. The next phrase is thank you. Thank you is used to express your appreciation. You can use thank you with everybody. The next phrase is you're welcome, you're welcome. When someone says thank you, you can say you're welcome. Ah, no biggie. I use no biggie as in no biggie is short for no big problem. The next word is yes. Yes, of course. Yes means is any positive expression. Someone asks you a question and the answer is a positive answer. You say yes, yep, uh-huh, yeah. We. Oui. <laughs> no. <laughs> next, I'm guessing I know it. Yep. The next word is no. No is a negative response to something when you have to give a negative answer. So as you can probably guess, um, the long form of no is negative. I like to use nope. It's very, very casual. Not gonna happen. My parents would use that with me. To soften that a little bit, if you want to show a negative response to something, like let's go out for dinner tonight. What do you want to do? Like, do you want to go out? Mm, not really. Mm, no, I don't think so, mm, to soften it. The next word is okay, okay. This word comes from copy editors. Okay, when they had to check a manuscript, um, they had to label the manuscript all clear, A-C, but because they were copy editors and they have a very, very sick sense of humor, they thought they would mark it okay for all clear to make a joke because O and K do not start all and clear, but it caught on among everybody in the world. <laughs> Anyway, okay uh, is used to agree with somebody else. Well, it can be used actually to express a positive or kind of a slight negative, I feel. Transitioning in your conversation, you can say, okay, now we're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next phrase is excuse me. Excuse me, it's used to get someone's attention in English when you don't know the other person. For example, in a store, a supermarket, maybe a stranger on the street, you need to ask directions. You can use excuse me. You can use excuse me in the supermarket. Excuse me, can you tell me where the hot sauce is? If you've done something rude in public, you can use excuse me. I personally do not do rude things in public ever. <laughs> I'm sorry is the next word we're gonna talk about. I'm sorry is used to apologize when you have made a mistake or someone you know has made a mistake and you're connected to it or you just feel bad, you can use I'm sorry. You made a mistake at work, I'm sorry. You forgot to feed your cat, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. You bump someone next to you. Oh, sorry. What time is it is the next phrase when you need to check what time it is. What time is it? When you ask someone else what time it is, maybe you say this to yourself too. Check your watch, check your phone, check a clock. Pretty straightforward phrase. There aren't really any short versions, so. That's an easy one. <laughs> Where is the plus a location? So you can use this for um, a building or a store. We don't, we're not gonna use this where is the for a place, a city name or a state name or a country name. To do that, you would need to remove the. But where is the bank? Where is the post office? You can use this to ask directions, to ask for help in your house or at work. Where is the copy machine? Where is the file I need? Where is the blah, blah, blah? And where is the bathroom is perhaps a very important question to know. The next one is, may I use the restroom? May I use the restroom is a polite uh, and soft expression that you can use if you need to use the toilet, you need to use the washroom. When you're at someone's house for the very first time, when you're in a place that you're that is new to you, you can ask, may I use the restroom? More casually, can I go to the bathroom? To be very polite, you could say, may I go to the bathroom? The next phrase is, I would like to order something. You can use this at a restaurant probably, or in any situation where you need to place an order. I'd like a pizza. I'd like a beer. Can I get the check, please? This will be used at a restaurant. When you've finished your meal and it's time to go, can I get the check, please? In a very, very casual situation, you can just say, check, please, that's fine. The next phrase is, see you soon. See you soon is used with friends and family members, perhaps, uh, when you expect to see them again soon after saying goodbye to them. This is used at the end of the conversation. You're going separate directions. You say, see you soon. See ya is also good, or just see you. To make it a little more formal, you can say, I'll see you again soon. Make a full sentence out of it that way. The next phrase is see you later. See you later is very similar to see you soon, but the point is with see you later is that you're probably going to meet that person again later on in the same day. The last phrase is really. Really is a very useful word because you can use it to show you are interested in a conversation with upward intonation. Really, really, tell me more. Or to show that you're not so interested in the conversation with downward intonation, really. So there are many other words that you can use similar to really in this way, like seriously or oh, oh, and so on. So it's a really good practice for your intonation. Uh, so those are 25 very common words uh, and phrases in English. If you liked this video, if you like this topic, um, please subscribe. Um, I'm sure there'll be a button here somewhere, or a button here, wherever. Um, but please be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be doing more videos like this and we already have more videos like this. So please be sure to check them out. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. The coffee is in me. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about the top 25 English adjectives. So these are the top 25 English adjectives in terms of how often they're used. So let's get right into it. Okay, the first adjective is the word good. Good can be used to refer to anything that you think is good or great or positive. In the comparative form, it is better. In the superlative form, it is best. So I think pizza is good. I think that sleep is good. I really think that sleep is good. Baseball is good. Playing sports is good. Video games are good. The next word is new. Comparative form newer, com superlative form newest. I have a new haircut. Do you want a new bike? I need to get a new job. Not true, sorry, no, <laughs> just an example sentence. So next one is first. First just refers to um, the number one of something. Yeah, the original of something. You could say the first silent film or the first movie I ever watched or the first CD I ever bought. The first CD I ever bought was Michael Jackson's bad. Next word is last, the final of something. We use last to refer to the most recent of something as well as in the last time I went to the beach or the last time I went to the forest or the last time I saw my friend. Have you ever? eaten the last piece of pizza when you weren't supposed to? <laughs> what was the last word we talked about? It was first. The next word is long. Uh, long, anything that you feel is... <laughs> Lightsabers are long. Subway sandwiches are long. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not supposed to laugh for long. The next word is great. Great can be used to express any positive emotion. Somebody gives you new information and you think it's good, uh, but you want to express that it's even better than good, you can say it's great. Greater is the comparative form. Greatest is the superlative form. The greatest invention of all time was the light bulb, for example. What? do you think is your greatest achievement? One of life's greatest pleasures is finding 
people to be good friends with is great. The next word is little. This is a very common uh, word that gets used in an expression like when I was little, referring to when you were a kid. So when I was little, I really liked to play outside. Or when I was little, I was really into Pokemon. I have said very little about the word little. The next word is near. Near, nearer, nearest. You probably know the location of the nearest, maybe a supermarket to your house or the nearest post office. I live near a very fashionable store. The next word is big. Big is used for anything that is large in size or large conceptually. So for example, you can say an elephant is a big animal or in terms of concept, you can say, um, let's see, that fashion is really big right now or that artist is really big right now. And that refers to popularity. Big movies are exciting to watch with friends. Do you have any bigger sandwiches? I'm really hungry. Next word is other. Other just refers to something else, something different from what is currently happening. The other thing, the other person. My other friend is a DJ. My other friend is a cook. My other friend is a dancer. My other friend, I have very interesting friends. What other things have you done with your life? <laughs> the next word is old. Old, it can be used to refer to people. It can be used to refer to animals, to art, anything that has a long history. So maybe I like old movies, or I don't like old art, or I think my grandpa is really, really old. This is getting old. The next word is right. This can be used to refer to the direction, right, as in the opposite of left, or it can be used to refer to something that is correct. So in a sentence like, you're right, it means you are correct. Correct, that is the correct answer. It can also be used to mean right, as in make a right turn. Uh, but you'll have to listen to the context to decide which meaning is the true meaning. This is not right could mean something that's not fair or that you disagree strongly with. This is not right. The next word is high. High refers to something that is very tall, very way up somewhere. So many people might say like, I have a fear of high buildings or I have a fear of high places. It can also, in the comparative form, just refer to something higher or taller than something else. Highest, meaning the most high. Squeaky level is high. I like high volume uh, music. The next word is different. Not the same as something else is different. I think that having many different friends is a lot of fun. Do you enjoy listening to different kinds of music? The next word is small. Small, smaller, smallest. Small and little are extremely similar. I would pretty much use them in the same way. Uh, however, we don't say when I was a small kid. We say when I was a little kid. Or you can say when I was small. The next word is large. Large and big are very much the same. I will say though that large is used on clothing sizes. Big is not. When we talked about big, we talked about how big can be used to refer to something that's very popular. Large is not used to refer to something that's, that's popular. Large is used um, for, for sizing, I feel, only. So like a house can be large, but it's, it's used to refer to like the physical size of something. Uh, large and in charge. Large, larger, largest. This is the largest uh, the bottom is in the zoo. <laughs> I have to go. The next word is easy. Easy is the next word. Easy, easier, easiest. Now, this is a good one that you can use anytime something seems very simple for you. For example, this test is easy, or that was the easiest thing I've ever done, or I hope this test is easier than the last test. You, oh gosh, don't call a person easy, Alicia. Uh, don't ever call a person easy unless you're trying to be really rude. My driving test was really easy. Or what's the easiest language you've ever studied? The next word is difficult. Uh, difficult is something that seems hard to do. What is the most difficult thing you've ever had to do? The most difficult thing I've ever had to do was move to a different country. The next word is young, young, younger, youngest. Come on, guys. Uh, younger, younger generations have a lot of uh, new technologies to experiment with. Young! The next word is important. Important, more important, most important. What is important to you? I think that practicing a, another language is more important than playing my banjo. I don't have a banjo. <laughs> you can find something that's important to you and put your time into it. I think drinking a lot of water every day is important. Putting on your shoes before you leave the house is very important. I have to go, it's very important that I go. Next word is interesting, interesting. Anything that you think is cool, anything that you find that makes you go ooh is something that's interesting. I think that 
this type of music is the most interesting type of music. Your mom is interesting. The next word is short, short, shorter, shortest. I am the shortest person in my class. I'm the shortest person in the room. Short just refers to something that is not long. So it can refer to a size or it can also refer to a concept um, as in a length of time. So like I'm going to travel abroad for a short period of time. Bad. You know I'm bad, I'm bad, you know. Bad, something that is not good. Bad food will give you bad feelings in your stomach. You're a bad dog. Who's a bad dog? You're a bad dog. The next one is boring. Something that is not interesting. Something that does not make you go, ooh, but something that makes you go, huh. The most boring story I've ever heard was a story about a tomato. If I don't do anything, this will be really boring. Oh. Far, referring to distance. Something that is not near to you is far. How can I go farther? Far. The farthest I've ever run is seven kilometers. I am not a runner. Okay, that's the end of the top 25 English adjectives. You've probably used these if you're studying English, uh, and if you haven't, try to experiment with them um, and see what kind of interesting sentences that you can make up. Try to use the, uh, the normal form and the comparative form and the negative form and the superlative form. You can express a lot with just these 25 words, so give them a try. Thanks very much for watching us in this lesson, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A woman is asking a store clerk something at a bookstore. Which book does the woman want to see? Excuse me. I'd like to take a look at a book on that shelf. Which book would you like? The one about cars. One moment, please. This one? Yep, yeah, that's right. Here you go. Which book does the woman want to see? A woman is asking a store clerk something at a bookstore. Which book? does the woman want to see? Excuse me, I'd like to take a look at a book on that shelf. Which book would you like? The one about cars. One moment, please. This one? Yep, yeah, that's right. Here you go. A man and a woman are looking over a menu at a restaurant. What's the man going to order? What are you going to order? The pizza looks delicious. I think I'll go with that. I had pizza yesterday, so... Okay, then. What about the hamburger? Sounds good. I'll go with that. What's the man going to order? A man and a woman are looking over a menu at a restaurant. What's the man going to order? What are you going to order? The pizza looks delicious. I think I'll go with that. I had pizza yesterday, so... Okay, then. What about the hamburger? Sounds good. I'll go with that. A man is calling the doctor's office. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? Hello, how can I help you? What time do you close today? We close at 6 o'clock, but please come in before 5.30. Okay. Thank you. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? A man is calling the doctor's office. What time does he need to be at the doctor's office by? Hello, how can I help you? What time do you close today? We close at 6 o'clock, but please come in before 5.30. Okay. Thank you. A boy is reading from his journal. What was the first thing the boy did today? The weather was great today. I went swimming this afternoon at the pool. 
and I went to a movie in the evening. I also studied all morning. Today wasn't bad. What was the first thing the boy did today? A boy is reading from his journal. What was the first thing the boy did today? The weather was great today. I went swimming this afternoon at the pool. And I went to a movie in the evening. I also studied all morning. Today wasn't bad. A woman and a man are looking at a photograph. Which photo are they looking at? This is a photo of the soccer team your son is on, isn't it? Which one is your son? This one. Oh, he's the tallest one. Yep, he's even taller than the coach. Which photo are they looking at? A woman and a man are looking at a photograph. Which photo are they looking at? This is a photo of the soccer team your son is on, isn't it? Which one is your son? This one. Oh, he's the tallest one. Yep, he's even taller than the coach. A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? Yes, I'd love to, but I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at 2 o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at 3 o'clock and see a movie at 4 o'clock. Okay. When are they going to see the movie? A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? Yes, I'd love to, but I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at 2 o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at 3 o'clock and see a movie at 4 o'clock. Okay. A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm. Which shirt do you think is better? The white one or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. Which shirt is he going to buy? A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm, which shirt do you think is better? The white one? Or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. A man is at a hamburger place. Which meal is he going to order? Excuse me, could I have the value meal, please? Sure thing. Which do you want, french fries or salad? French fries. Okay. What will you have to drink? Coke, please. Which meal is he going to order? A man is at a hamburger place. Which meal is he going to order? Excuse me. Could I have the value meal, please? Sure thing. Which do you want, french fries or salad? French fries. Okay. What will you have to drink? Coke, please. A teacher is baking a cake. What did the teacher put in it? Today we're baking a cake. First, mix butter and sugar. Then add two eggs and mix them well. Add flour and mix it a little bit. Put it in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes. That's it. What did the teacher put in it? 
A teacher is baking a cake. What did the teacher put in it? Today we're baking a cake. First, mix butter and sugar. Then add two eggs and mix them well. Add flour and mix it a little bit. Put it in the oven and bake it for 50 minutes. That's it. A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first, and then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. What are they going to do first? A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first, and then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. A teacher and a student are talking. When will the student go to the teacher's office? I didn't really understand today's class. I see. What was confusing? Several things. Do you have time now? Actually, I'm a little busy. Could you come to my office in the afternoon? I'll be there from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. I'll be there at 2 p.m. When will the student go to the teacher's office? A teacher and a student are talking. When will the student go to the teacher's office? I didn't really understand today's class. I see. What was confusing? Several things. Do you have time now? Actually, I'm a little busy. Could you come to my office in the afternoon? I'll be there from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, I'll be there at 2 p.m. A woman is having lunch in a restaurant. What is she going to order? Would you like to have coffee or dessert after the meal? What desserts do you have? We have pudding and apple pie. Hmm. Actually, I'll just have coffee. Do you want cream or sugar? Cream, please. What is she going to order? A woman is having lunch in a restaurant. What is she going to order? Would you like to have coffee or dessert after the meal? What desserts do you have? We have pudding and apple pie. Hmm. Actually, I'll just have coffee. Do you want cream or sugar? Cream, please. A woman is waiting for a man. Where is the woman now? Hey, really sorry, but it looks like I'll be 30 minutes late. Okay. I'll wait for you at the cafe. Cafe? Where is it? It's next to the bookstore. There's a bakery across from the cafe. Okay. Where is the woman now? A woman is waiting for a man. Where is the woman now? Hey, really sorry, but it looks like I'll be 30 minutes late. Okay, I'll wait for you at the cafe. Cafe? Where is it? It's next to the bookstore. There's a bakery across from the cafe. Okay. A man and a woman are talking about summer vacation. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? Have you already planned for the summer vacation? Not yet. 
I'm thinking about going to the sea or the mountains. I'm going to the beach with some friends. We're going surfing. Sounds nice. Why don't you come with us? Wow, sure. Thanks. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? A man and a woman are talking about summer vacation. What is the woman going to do on her summer vacation? Have you already planned for the summer vacation? Not yet. I'm thinking about going to the sea or the mountains. I'm going to the beach with some friends. We're going surfing. Sounds nice. Why don't you come with us? Wow, sure. Thanks. A man and a woman are talking. What did the woman eat this morning? Oh, I'm hungry. Did you eat anything for breakfast? Yes, I did, but only a little. What did you eat? I had yogurt and coffee. That's not enough. You'll need some bread and fruit, too. What did the woman eat this morning? A man and a woman are talking. What did the woman eat this morning? Oh, I'm hungry. Did you eat anything for breakfast? Yes, I did, but only a little. What did you eat? I had yogurt and coffee. That's not enough. You'll need some bread and fruit, too. A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. Which floor is she going to? A woman is in a department store. Which floor is she going to? Excuse me, where are the children's clothes? They're on the fifth and sixth floors. Do you also have baby clothes? Yes, they're on the sixth floor. We have a lot there. Thank you very much. I'll go and have a look there. A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations. We should celebrate. Thank you very much. It's kind of you to say. How old is the man now? A man and a woman are talking. How old is the man now? Your birthday is really soon, isn't it? Yep, it's the day after tomorrow. How old are you going to be? I'm turning 60. Congratulations. We should celebrate. Thank you very much. It's kind of you to say. A woman is looking at clothes in a boutique. What is she going to buy? Wow, this blue skirt and that white skirt. I like them both. The white skirt is really popular right now. The blue one's a bit expensive, too. Well, that's true, but it suits you. Um, I can't afford both. I'll take the white one. An excellent choice. Thank you very much. What is she going to buy? A woman is looking at clothes in a boutique. What is she going to buy? Wow, this blue skirt and that white skirt. I like them both. The white skirt is really popular right now. The blue one's a bit expensive, too. Well, that's true, but it suits you. Um, I can't afford both. I'll take the white one. An excellent choice. Thank you very much. A man and a woman are talking. 
How many people in total are coming to the party? The party's tomorrow. Who's coming? Well, the two of us, two friends of mine, and my pottery teacher. That will make five then. Oh, well, my teacher's also bringing his wife. Wow, a big party then. How many people in total are coming to the party? A man and a woman are talking. How many people in total are coming to the party? The party's tomorrow. Who's coming? Well, the two of us, two friends of mine, and my pottery teacher. That will make five then. Oh, well, my teacher's also bringing his wife. Wow, a big party then. A woman bought a bed. Where is she going to put it? Your new bed. It's huge. Yep. I can't put it by the door. Let's put it at the other end of the room. Shall we put it in the middle? No. Let's put it in the corner. Okay. Sounds good. Can you help me lift it? Where is she going to put it? A woman bought a bed. Where is she going to put it? Your new bed. It's huge. Yep. I can't put it by the door. Let's put it at the other end of the room. Shall we put it in the middle? No. Let's put it in the corner. Okay. Sounds good. Can you help me lift it? Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year. And the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? A man is reporting about his company's sales performance at a meeting. Which two charts is he using for his presentation? Please look at the handout. The left chart shows our company's sales over the past three years and the sales forecast for the current year. And the right chart shows the monthly breakdown in sales up to October of this year. Now, please have a look at the left chart. It shows that sales have been steadily increasing over the past three years. And if we can keep increasing our sales, the total sales for this year will show an increase over last year. Next, please look at the right chart. The right chart shows that the campaigns we ran in April and August were fairly effective. I see, but the sales decreased in May and September following the campaigns. Yes, but this kind of decrease is unavoidable. I expect the annual sales for this year will show an increase over last year if we can keep increasing our sales. A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, 
But we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays, and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays, but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay. I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. What type of membership will he choose? A man is joining a sports club and getting information on its policies. What type of membership will he choose? Let me start by explaining our club's different membership options, as described in this brochure. Regular members can use the gym and the pool at any time on any day of the week, but we also offer early morning memberships where people can use the facilities only in the early morning, and night memberships for people who only want to come in the evening. What are the hours for early morning members? Early morning members can use the facilities from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., and night members can use them from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. I see. So early morning members can stop by and use the facilities on their way to work. Exactly. The early morning type is popular among people with 9 to 5 jobs, and we also offer memberships just for the gym or just for the pool, if you only want to use one of those. I want to use both, the gym and the pool. I think I'll use the gym in the early morning before going to work on weekdays, and then use the pool on the weekend. Do you have a membership that covers something like early mornings for the weekdays, but all day on the weekend? We're sorry, but we don't offer a membership like that, sir. Okay. I don't think I can get up that early on the weekend, so I'll choose this membership option. A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So, would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft, and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then, we'll make the final design based on your choice. So it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm, okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right, we'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? A woman is talking with a man who works for an outsourced printing company about a brochure for a new product. When is the deadline for the first design draft for the brochure? We decided to launch the new product on October 15th, and we'd like to offer you the contract to make the brochure. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited about helping you with this project. So, could you tell us a bit about the schedule? When will you need everything by? Well, considering the time needed for printing, we'd like to get the brochures to the printing stage by the end of September. So would it be possible for you to get us the first design draft by the middle of August? Well, we'd like to give you three design options for the initial draft and then have you choose the one which best fits your concept. Then we'll make the final design based on your choice. So it'll be very helpful if you could give us two more weeks to prepare for this stage. Hmm, okay. Maybe one month will be enough time to choose one of the designs you've made and then decide on the final design. All right, we'll be counting on you. You're in good hands. Our design team is the best. Thank you so much. A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. 
Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so... This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. Which two seats did she get? A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so... This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double-check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So, make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see. What else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? A man and a woman are talking about preparations for a presentation they'll be making tomorrow at their office. What will the woman check after the conversation ends? Okay, I think we're almost ready for the presentation tomorrow. Just a few more things. The meeting will start at 9 sharp, so could you double-check the meeting room today? Yep, I've already checked the room. Okay, great. Did you make sure the projector's working okay? Oh, I was going to check the projector tomorrow morning when I have my laptop. No, we've got to get that checked today. We won't have time to deal with it in the morning if there's a problem. So, make sure to check that projector today. That's the most important thing, okay? Will do. And did you get the copies of those handouts? Ms. Tanaka is making them now. Let's see. What else? Oh, did you check the whiteboard? Yes, I did. Sometimes the pens don't have enough ink left in them. Did you get a chance to check them? Not yet, but I'll make sure to do that later. Yes, please make sure to do that today. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready?
A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown, plus, it has free Wi Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So, how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. Which hotel are they going to choose? A man and a woman are choosing a hotel. Which hotel are they going to choose? We have to decide on the hotel for our trip next month. Okay, let's check the internet. The Ocean Hotel is near the beach. It says $120 a night per person, and you get a buffet breakfast. How about the Pine Hotel? It's $80 a night. I don't want to waste too much on accommodations. Hmm, but the Pine Hotel is far from the beach and from downtown, and it says you have to pay for Wi Fi. What about the Sunrise Hotel? It usually costs $140 a night, but now they're running a promotion, and we can stay one night for $90. It's between the beach and downtown. Plus, it has free Wi Fi. Sounds good. Oh, wait. It says the deal is for next week only. Oh, I didn't see that. So, how about this place, the Royal Hotel? It's located in the middle of downtown and it costs $100 a night. The room doesn't look so nice, but they have free Wi Fi. Okay, let's book this hotel. Oh, it's already fully booked. Shoot. Then I think the first one is best. Is it full? No, it's not. Great. A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. Four people will be seated in each group. Okay. And I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. How are they going to arrange the tables? A man and a woman are talking about the layout of a meeting room. How are they going to arrange the tables? Let's move the tables for tomorrow's meeting. All right. Shall we put all the tables in the center of the room so that everyone faces each other? Well, there's going to be a group session first, so let's separate the tables into four sections. Four people will be seated in each group. Okay. And I'll put some pens and pads of paper on each table. Thank you. And we'll have a short presentation at the beginning of the session, so we need a projector here. All right. Also, we're going to use a whiteboard, aren't we? Is it okay if I put the whiteboard next to the screen? Well, how about putting the whiteboard at the other end of the room? That makes sense. After the meeting, we need to put everything back where it was, in four rows of two tables per row. A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay, the printer is out of color ink. 
Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm. Okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six pack of batteries to replace them. What will the man order? A man and a woman are talking about office supplies. What will the man order? Every month you need to check our office supplies and order any items that are running low. This time, let's take a look at them together. Here's the checklist. Okay, that sounds good. Well, starting with the paper, it looks like there's only one box left. We use lots of paper every day, so let's order two more boxes. Okay, the printer is out of color ink. Should we order that? We don't really print documents in color, so we don't need to worry about that. Hmm, okay. Looks like these whiteboard markers are running out of ink. Right. Those need to be replaced. We get a discount if we order them in sets of five, so let's do that. Okay. And while we're at it, can we order a mouse? Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. That's probably because it's running out of batteries. Let's check the stock of batteries and order more if we don't have many left. Sure. Well, we have three batteries here. You can take two of these for your mouse, but buy a six pack of batteries to replace them. A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a nonstop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. How is she going to get to the airport? A woman is asking for directions to the airport at an information center. How is she going to get to the airport? Excuse me, I need to go to the airport. Would you tell me how to get there? Sure, there are a few ways. If you take bus number one, it takes about one and a half hours to the airport. It's the least expensive way. Bus number two is a nonstop bus. It's more expensive and leaves once every hour, but it only takes 50 minutes. I see. What about taxis? There's a taxi stand in front of the building, and they take about an hour. But they use the expressway and charge extra for a lot of luggage, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than the bus. I guess that makes sense, and I'd like to avoid paying too much. You didn't by chance buy anything at Shopping World while you were here. They offer complimentary shuttle service to the airport for customers who make a purchase there. Wow, I didn't know that. I haven't bought anything yet, but I was going to stop by and get some souvenirs there anyway. Then you can use that. A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and 400 of the medium red sweaters. And we also need 600 of the small green sweaters and 200 of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. 
I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right, we'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. What is the woman going to get for the sale? A woman and a supplier are talking on the phone. What is the woman going to get for the sale? I need you to deliver some more sweaters in time for the sale next month. Okay, what do you need? We need a thousand of the small red sweaters and 400 of the medium red sweaters. And we also need 600 of the small green sweaters and 200 of the medium green sweaters by the end of this month. Red and green sweaters. Actually, we're running low on green sweaters and we're waiting on some green yarn from our supplier. We'll get you started with the red sweaters, though. No, no, no. We need the red and green sweaters together. So please just get as many green sweaters ready as you can. Okay. I think we can get 200 of the green sweaters to you on time. Which size has higher priority? The small ones take priority. Sorry for such short notice, but we really need your help. All right. We'll do our best. We'll get those green sweaters to you along with all the red sweaters you ordered. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A woman is asking about a library's lending policy. Which materials could she borrow at one time? Excuse me, can you tell me how to borrow books? Is it your first time at this library? Yes. Well then, I'll explain the rules to you. You can borrow up to six books and five CDs or DVDs at a time per person. But you can only borrow up to ten items in total at a time. Everything needs to be returned in two weeks, and if you'd like to renew, please let us know before then. Can I also borrow magazines or newspapers? You can't borrow newspapers, but you can borrow magazines except for the latest issue. Can I return them through the mail? We can't accept returns through the mail. Please come to the library to return them. After hours, you can put them in the box next to the entrance. But items that are overdue, please return them directly to this desk. I see. Thank you very much. Which materials could she borrow at one time? A woman is asking about a library's lending policy. Which materials could she borrow at one time? Excuse me, can you tell me how to borrow books? Is it your first time at this library? Yes. Well then, I'll explain the rules to you. You can borrow up to six books and five CDs or DVDs at a time per person. But you can only borrow up to ten items in total at a time. Everything needs to be returned in two weeks, and if you'd like to renew, please let us know before then. Can I also borrow magazines or newspapers? You can't borrow newspapers, but you can borrow magazines except for the latest issue. Can I return them through the mail? We can't accept returns through the mail. Please come to the library to return them. After hours, you can put them in the box next to the entrance. But items that are overdue, please return them directly to this desk. I see. Thank you very much. A man is choosing an insurance plan. Which plan is he going to sign up for? What kind of trip will you be taking? I'm going scuba diving. Since I'll be bringing all my own equipment, I'm a bit worried about getting it stolen. Very smart of you. Insurance against theft is included in all of our plans. Since scuba diving equipment is an unusual type of baggage, only Plan A can cover it, though. Alternatively, you can get insurance specifically for scuba diving equipment and add it to other plans. Plan A is the most expensive one, right? What's the difference between Plan B and Plan C? Okay, for example, if you happen to stay in a hospital abroad, 
Plan B covers flight tickets for your family to visit you, but Plan C doesn't. I see. If I get the special contractor scuba diving equipment and add it to Plan B or Plan C, would it be more expensive than Plan A? With Plan B, that would make it a little more expensive. But with Plan C, it would be less expensive. Okay. By the way, is there any plan that's cheaper than Plan C? Yes, we have Plan D, but it doesn't cover accommodation if your flight gets delayed or canceled, so we don't recommend this plan. Got it. I agree that I need coverage, but I don't think I need coverage for family plane tickets. So I'll take this plan and combine it with the insurance for scuba diving equipment. Which plan is he going to sign up for? A man is choosing an insurance plan. Which plan is he going to sign up for? What kind of trip will you be taking? I'm going scuba diving. Since I'll be bringing all my own equipment, I'm a bit worried about getting it stolen. Very smart of you. Insurance against theft is included in all of our plans. Since scuba diving equipment is an unusual type of baggage, only Plan A can cover it, though. Alternatively, you can get insurance specifically for scuba diving equipment and add it to other plans. Plan A is the most expensive one, right? What's the difference between Plan B and Plan C? Okay, for example, if you happen to stay in a hospital abroad, Plan B covers flight tickets for your family to visit you, but Plan C doesn't. I see. If I get the special contractor scuba diving equipment and add it to Plan B or Plan C, would it be more expensive than Plan A? With Plan B, that would make it a little more expensive. But with Plan C, it would be less expensive. Okay. By the way, is there any plan that's cheaper than Plan C? Yes, we have Plan D, but it doesn't cover accommodation if your flight gets delayed or canceled, so we don't recommend this plan. Got it. I agree that I need coverage, but I don't think I need coverage for family plane tickets. So I'll take this plan and combine it with the insurance for scuba diving equipment. A woman is reporting to her boss about the results of a questionnaire. Which graph represents the employees from the B branch? Last week, we asked 200 employees to answer a questionnaire about their fitness habits. The focus of this questionnaire was on how many hours they exercise each week. Did you tally up the results for the A and B branches separately? Yes. And employees had four options: less than an hour, around one to two hours, around three to five hours, and six hours or more. Here are the results. So employees in both branches answered about one to two hours the most. Looks like they're exercising about once a week. Yes, and after that, employees in the A branch were most likely to answer about three to five hours. While in the B branch, the next most common answer was less than an hour. Hmm. Not even ten percent of employees at the B branch exercise more than six hours. That's right. So I was thinking we could organize weekly sports events there that anybody could casually join. That's a good idea. It'd give employees a good chance to socialize too. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. I'll take care of it. Which graph represents the employees from the B branch? A woman is reporting to her boss about the results of a questionnaire. Which graph represents the employees from the B branch? Last week, we asked 200 employees to answer a questionnaire about their fitness habits. The focus of this questionnaire. Was on how many hours they exercise each week. Did you tally up the results for the A and B branches separately? Yes, and employees had four options: less than an hour, around one to two hours, around three to five hours, and six hours or more. Here are the results. So employees in both branches answered about one to two hours the most. Looks like they're exercising about once a week. Yes. 
and after that, employees in the A branch were most likely to answer about three to five hours, while in the B branch, the next most common answer was less than an hour. Hmm, not even 10% of employees at the B branch exercise more than six hours. That's right. So I was thinking we could organize weekly sports events there that anybody could casually join. That's a good idea. It'd give employees a good chance to socialize, too. I'll leave it to you. Thank you. I'll take care of it. A male student and a female student are talking about volunteer activities. Which activities are they going to take part in? I heard we're supposed to volunteer for some activity and write a report about it for class. We can choose anything, right? What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind yet. What about you? I haven't decided yet either. I'm interested in environmental issues, so I'm looking for something in a nature conservation group. I see. So you want to go and pick up trash off of the ground? Well, that'd be okay, actually, but I'm looking for a group activity. I want to learn more about a leadership role in this kind of organization as well, if possible. You know, I have a friend who helps out with a group that plants trees with kids. Are you interested in that kind of thing? Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks. It'd also be a great opportunity to interact with children. Do you want to do this too? Maybe. But I'd like to try something a bit more people-focused. You know, like helping elderly or disabled people. Oh, my mother is helping out at the local senior center. Would that be interesting to you? Yes, that sounds great. Which activities are they going to take part in? A male student and a female student are talking about volunteer activities. Which activities are they going to take part in? I heard we're supposed to volunteer for some activity and write a report about it for class. We can choose anything, right? What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind yet. What about you? I haven't decided yet either. I'm interested in environmental issues, so I'm looking for something in a nature conservation group. I see. So you want to go and pick up trash off of the ground? Well, that'd be okay, actually, but I'm looking for a group activity. I want to learn more about a leadership role in this kind of organization as well, if possible. You know, I have a friend who helps out with a group that plants trees with kids. Are you interested in that kind of thing? Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks. It'd also be a great opportunity to interact with children. Do you want to do this too? Maybe. But I'd like to try something a bit more people-focused. You know, like helping elderly or disabled people. Oh, my mother is helping out at the local senior center. Would that be interesting to you? Yes, that sounds great. Two bakers are talking. How are they going to display their bread? This new cheesy bread isn't selling well, is it? No. We placed it on the top shelf, though. Hmm. Maybe it's too high for some people. They probably can't see it. Then let's put it on the middle shelf. Sounds good. They'll see it when they first come into the store. And why don't we put a red cloth on this shelf so that they know it's our new bread? All right. Then we'll have to move the croissants to somewhere else. Top or bottom? Why don't we put our regular items on the top shelf? They'll sell well even if they're not easy to spot. That has to be the French bread, then. Let's put it in a basket so it'll stand out. Good idea. Now, the croissants have to be on the bottom. Okay. How does it look? Looks good. Let's see how it goes for a week and then decide if we need to make any adjustments. How are they going to display their bread? Two bakers are talking. How are they going to display their bread? This new cheesy bread isn't selling well, is it? No. We placed it on the top shelf, though. Hmm. Maybe it's too high for some people. They probably can't see it. Then let's put it on the middle shelf. Sounds good. They'll see it when they first come into the store. 
And why don't we put a red cloth on this shelf so that they know it's our new bread? All right, then we'll have to move the croissants to somewhere else. Top or bottom? Why don't we put our regular items on the top shelf? They'll sell well even if they're not easy to spot. That has to be the French bread then. Let's put it in a basket so it'll stand out. Good idea. Now, the croissants have to be on the bottom. Okay. How does it look? Looks good. Let's see how it goes for a week and then decide if we need to make any adjustments. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man is looking for a birthday present for his wife at a jewelry shop. Which necklace is he going to buy? May I help you? I'm looking for a birthday present for my wife. What do you recommend? Well, what about this necklace? Hmm, it looks a little long. What about these over here? We have one with a flower pendant and another one with a heart. I'm looking for something a bit more sophisticated. How much is this pearl necklace over here? It's $5,000. Hmm, that's too expensive. Okay, I'll take the first one. Sure thing. Here you are. Which necklace is he going to buy? A man is looking for a birthday present for his wife at a jewelry shop. Which necklace is he going to buy? May I help you? I'm looking for a birthday present for my wife. What do you recommend? Well, what about this necklace? Hmm, it looks a little long. What about these over here? We have one with a flower pendant and another one with a heart. I'm looking for something a bit more sophisticated. How much is this pearl necklace over here? It's $5,000. Hmm, that's too expensive. Okay, I'll take the first one. Sure thing. Here you are. A man and a woman are talking about printers in the office. Where is the old printer? Where should we put the new printer? Hmm, I think we should put it where the old printer is now. But the old one still works. We're going to keep using it. Okay, so we can't put the new one there. It's too bad. It would be nice to have the new one in the bookshelf next to the door, but there's only room for one printer there. Okay then, I think we should put it on the other side of the room. Right. How about next to the window? That sounds good. Where is the old printer? A man and a woman are talking about printers in the office. Where is the old printer? Where should we put the new printer? Hmm, I think we should put it where the old printer is now. But the old one still works. We're going to keep using it. Okay, so we can't put the new one there. It's too bad. It would be nice to have the new one in the bookshelf next to the door, but there's only room for one printer there. Okay then, I think we should put it on the other side of the room. Right. How about next to the window? That sounds good. A man is talking with his wife on the phone. What's he going to buy? Hey, heading home now. Okay. Could you buy something on the way home? Sure. What do you want me to get? We need some milk and bread for tomorrow's breakfast. Milk and bread. Got it. How many cartons of milk? One should be fine. Okay. Anything else? One second. Let me check if we have butter. Okay, we've got some. All right. Do we have any beer left? Yes, we still have a bottle here. Okay, so... We don't need to buy any right now. Right. I think we're good. 
Thank you. What's he going to buy? A man is talking with his wife on the phone. What's he going to buy? Hey, heading home now. Okay. Could you buy something on the way home? Sure. What do you want me to get? We need some milk and bread for tomorrow's breakfast. Milk and bread. Got it. How many cartons of milk? One should be fine. Okay. Anything else? One second. Let me check if we have butter. Okay, we've got some. All right. Do we have any beer left? Yes, we still have a bottle here. Okay, so we don't need to buy any right now. Right, I think we're good. Thank you. You're listening to the weather forecast. What's the forecast? We'll have sunny weather all through the morning. In the afternoon, though, it's going to get cloudy and we'll have rain in the night. The rain will continue through the night until early tomorrow morning when the sun will start coming out again. What's the forecast? You're listening to the weather forecast. What's the forecast? We'll have sunny weather all through the morning. In the afternoon, though, it's going to get cloudy and we'll have rain in the night. The rain will continue through the night until early tomorrow morning when the sun will start coming out again. A man and a woman are talking about the design of the company business card. Which design did they decide on? We've got some new designs for the company business card. Which one do you think is best? Let's see. I think the company name should be bigger. Okay, then. It should be one of these. Right. I like these because the company name is big and on top. One of these has a space for a photo. What do you think? Hmm. I think it makes the text a little too small. Yeah, the text could be a little hard to read with the picture. Okay, then. Let's go with the other one. Which design did they decide on? A man and a woman are talking about the design of the company business card. Which design did they decide on? We've got some new designs for the company business card. Which one do you think is best? Let's see. I think the company name should be bigger. Okay, then. It should be one of these. Right. I like these because the company name is big and on top. One of these has a space for a photo. What do you think? Hmm. I think it makes the text a little too small. Yeah, the text could be a little hard to read with the picture. Okay, then. Let's go with the other one. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A woman is looking for a bus stop. She asks a man where one is. Where is the bus stop? Excuse me, do you know if there's a bus stop near here? Yes, one is very close. First, go straight and turn at the second traffic light. Then, turn left at the corner of the bookstore, you will see a bank. The bus stop is in front of the bank. Got it. Thank you so much. Where is the bus stop? A woman is looking for a bus stop. She asks a man where one is. Where is the bus stop? Excuse me, do you know if there's a bus stop near here? Yes, one is very close. First, go straight and turn at the second traffic light. Then, turn left at the corner of the bookstore, you will see a bank. 
The bus stop is in front of the bank. Got it. Thank you so much. A woman is talking with her boss. What will they drink in the meeting? We'll be having a meeting with Michael from our New York office this afternoon. Do you know if there are any drinks left? We have some coffee. Hmm. Michael doesn't drink coffee. Do we have any bottled water? Yes. I think there's still some left. Excellent. Very good. Do you want anything? I'll have the same thing too. What will they drink in the meeting? A woman is talking with her boss. What will they drink in the meeting? We'll be having a meeting with Michael from our New York office this afternoon. Do you know if there are any drinks left? We have some coffee. Hmm. Michael doesn't drink coffee. Do we have any bottled water? Yes. I think there's still some left. Excellent. Very good. Do you want anything? I'll have the same thing too. A woman is talking to a salesperson at the mall. Which computer is she going to buy? Excuse me. I'm looking for a really light ultrabook. Okay. How about this one? It's really flat and light. It looks nice. Can you watch DVDs on this computer? I'm afraid not. You can watch DVDs on that one, but it's a little bit larger and heavier. Hmm. Yeah. This is too heavy. I'll buy the first one. Thank you so much. You can choose from white, black, or silver. I want the black one. Which computer is she going to buy? A woman is talking to a salesperson at the mall. Which computer is she going to buy? Excuse me, I'm looking for a really light ultrabook. Okay, how about this one? It's really flat and light. It looks nice. Can you watch DVDs on this computer? I'm afraid not. You can watch DVDs on that one, but it's a little bit larger and heavier. Hmm. Yeah. This is too heavy. I'll buy the first one. Thank you so much. You can choose from white, black, or silver. I want the black one. A man is talking with a woman about his upcoming trip. When is he coming back to Salt Lake City? You're going on a trip next week, right? Yes, I'm going to Hong Kong on Tuesday and will stay there for two nights. Then you're going to Taipei. Yes, I'm going to Taipei on Thursday and will stay there overnight, and then I'll come back home. So, you'll be at the meeting on Saturday, right? Yes, that's right. When is he coming back to Salt Lake City? A man is talking with a woman about his upcoming trip. When is he coming back to Salt Lake City? You're going on a trip next week, right? Yes, I'm going to Hong Kong on Tuesday and will stay there for two nights. Then you're going to Taipei. Yes, I'm going to Taipei on Thursday and will stay there overnight, and then I'll come back home. So, you'll be at the meeting on Saturday, right? Yes, that's right. A man is ordering a pizza over the phone. What does he order? Thank you for calling. This is Pizza Station. Hi, can I have a garlic tomato pizza? A garlic tomato pizza? Okay, which size? A large, please, and cut it into eight pieces. Sure. Do you want anything else? Yes, I'll have four breadsticks and two cans of Coke. 
All right, we're going to deliver it in about 40 minutes. What does he order? A man is ordering a pizza over the phone. What does he order? Thank you for calling. This is Pizza Station. Hi, can I have a garlic tomato pizza? A garlic tomato pizza? Okay, which size? A large, please, and cut it into eight pieces. Sure. Do you want anything else? Yes. I'll have four breadsticks and two cans of Coke. All right. We're going to deliver it in about 40 minutes. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man is going to have dinner at a restaurant. What time will the restaurant close? Excuse me, how late are you open? We're open until 11 p.m., but the kitchen closes at 10 p.m. Is that okay? Yes, sure. Thanks. It's pretty late, so I thought you were already closed. We used to close this place at 10 p.m., but we pushed it back. Oh, I see. But we closed the restaurant at 9 on Sunday. Got it. What time will the restaurant close? A man is going to have dinner at a restaurant. What time will the restaurant close? Excuse me, how late are you open? We're open until 11 p.m., but the kitchen closes at 10 p.m. Is that okay? Yes, sure. Thanks. It's pretty late, so I thought you were already closed. We used to close this place at 10 p.m., but we pushed it back. Oh, I see. But we closed the restaurant at 9 on Sunday. Got it. A husband and wife are shopping online. When will the vacuum cleaner be delivered? Which vacuum do you like better? Well, I think this one looks nice. Yeah, it does. It'll take three or four days to deliver. Can we be here next Saturday? No, we're going to play golf Saturday morning. Okay, then maybe we can have it delivered Sunday. Sounds good. Hey, let's remember not to stay out too late Friday night. We have to get up early on Sunday. I know. When will the vacuum cleaner be delivered? A husband and wife are shopping online. When will the vacuum cleaner be delivered? Which vacuum do you like better? Well, I think this one looks nice. Yeah, it does. It'll take three or four days to deliver. Can we be here next Saturday? No, we're going to play golf Saturday morning. Okay, then maybe we can have it delivered Sunday. Sounds good. Hey, let's remember not to stay out too late Friday night. We have to get up early on Sunday. I know. A woman is talking to her doctor. Which and how many medicines will she have to take every day? Well, I'm giving you three kinds of medicine. Please take them after dinner every day. Okay. Take two of the round pills, one capsule, and one eardrop each time. Sure. I'm giving you a three-day course of medicine. If you're not better after that, come and see me again. Thank you very much. Get well soon. Which and how many medicines will she have to take every day? A woman is talking to her doctor. 
Which and how many medicines will she have to take every day? Well, I'm giving you three kinds of medicine. Please take them after dinner every day. Okay. Take two of the round pills, one capsule, and one eardrop each time. Sure. I'm giving you a three day course of medicine. If you're not better after that, come and see me again. Thank you very much. Get well soon. A man and a woman are talking. Who lives with the man? I'd like to introduce you to my family. Is there some time soon you could come over? Wow, this is a big step. Could you tell me a bit more about your family before I meet them? Sure. My father works in computers and his hobby is fishing. My mother runs a restaurant and she's good at cooking. They live nearby. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. I have an older sister and a younger brother. My sister is married and is living abroad. My brother is in law school over on the East Coast. It sounds like you have a nice family. I'd love to meet them. Who lives with the man? A man and a woman are talking. Who lives with the man? I'd like to introduce you to my family. Is there some time soon you could come over? Wow, this is a big step. Could you tell me a bit more about your family before I meet them? Sure. My father works in computers and his hobby is fishing. My mother runs a restaurant and she's good at cooking. They live nearby. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. I have an older sister and a younger brother. My sister is married and is living abroad. My brother is in law school over on the East Coast. It sounds like you have a nice family. I'd love to meet them. A man is in a glasses shop. Which pair of glasses does he choose? Hello, are you looking for glasses? Yes, my eyes have been quite bad lately. Okay, do you like square lenses? Well, I've been wearing square shaped glasses for a long time, so I'd like to try something else. Sure, I recommend these round ones. Hmm, I don't think it suits me like I expected. I'll take the same shape as my current glasses. Do you have any with black frames? Certainly. How about this pair? Yes, I'll take these. Which pair of glasses does he choose? A man is in a glasses shop. Which pair of glasses does he choose? Hello, are you looking for glasses? Yes, my eyes have been quite bad lately. Okay, do you like square lenses? Well, I've been wearing square shaped glasses for a long time, so I'd like to try something else. Sure, I recommend these round ones. Hmm, I don't think it suits me like I expected. I'll take the same shape as my current glasses. Do you have any with black frames? Certainly. How about this pair? Yes, I'll take these. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man and a woman are talking on the phone. When is the man going to see the dentist? I'm sorry, but can you please cancel my appointment for today? Sure thing. Is there another day when you can come in? How about Saturday? The morning is better for me. I'm afraid this Saturday is fully booked. We can put you in for next Saturday, though. Actually, one of my teeth is starting to hurt. Can we do late afternoon on Thursday? 
Yes, both five o'clock and six o'clock are available. Six o'clock sounds good. Sure thing. We'll schedule you for then. When is the man going to see the dentist? A man and a woman are talking on the phone. When is the man going to see the dentist? I'm sorry, but can you please cancel my appointment for today? Sure thing. Is there another day when you can come in? How about Saturday? The morning is better for me. I'm afraid this Saturday is fully booked. We can put you in for next Saturday, though. Actually, one of my teeth is starting to hurt. Can we do late afternoon on Thursday? Yes, both five o'clock and six o'clock are available. Six o'clock sounds good. Sure thing. We'll schedule you for then. A woman will be visiting her friend's apartment. What is her friend's apartment number? Can't wait for your party on Sunday. Me too. It starts at twelve o'clock. Right. Your apartment is one zero one eight, isn't it? Yes, that's right. My apartment is in a two-building complex with an east and west tower. My room is one zero one eight in the east building. Okay. Please call me if you have any questions. Will do. Thank you. What is her friend's apartment number? A woman will be visiting her friend's apartment. What is her friend's apartment number? Can't wait for your party on Sunday. Me too. It starts at twelve o'clock. Right. Your apartment is one zero one eight, isn't it? Yes, that's right. My apartment is in a two-building complex with an east and west tower. My room is one zero one eight in the east building. Okay. Please call me if you have any questions. Will do. Thank you. A man is renting some DVDs. How many DVDs is he going to rent? Hello. How may I help you? I'd like to rent these DVDs, please. Three altogether. You know, you get a discount if you rent five. Sounds nice, but I won't have time to watch that many movies, so I'll just take these three. We're offering a special discount right now, and you can get them for an extra week. Really? Awesome! I'll get two more. How many DVDs is he going to rent? A man is renting some DVDs. How many DVDs is he going to rent? Hello. How may I help you? I'd like to rent these DVDs, please. Three altogether. You know, you get a discount if you rent five. Sounds nice, but I won't have time to watch that many movies, so I'll just take these three. We're offering a special discount right now. And you can get them for an extra week. Really? Awesome! I'll get two more. A man and a woman are talking. Which clock are they looking at, and what time is it? Hey, what time is it? Sorry, no watch today, and I forgot my phone at home. Okay. I'm a bit worried that we won't make the train. Look, there's a clock at the station entrance. Nice, but it looks like the train will be here in five minutes. That's the ten o'clock train, right? Right. We'd better hurry up. Which clock are they looking at, and what time is it?
A man and a woman are talking. Which clock are they looking at, and what time is it? Hey, what time is it? Sorry, no watch today, and I forgot my phone at home. Okay, I'm a bit worried that we won't make the train. Look, there's a clock at the station entrance. Nice, but it looks like the train will be here in five minutes. That's the ten o'clock train, right? Right. We'd better hurry up. A man is choosing his seat for a flight. Where is his seat? Do you have any seats available for the flight tomorrow night? Would you like to sit in regular economy or premium economy? Regular economy is fine. Hmm. Thank you for waiting. We do have a few seats. Great. I'd like an aisle seat, please. I'm afraid there are no aisle seats left. Ah,、uh, okay. Could you just not put me in the middle? Would a window seat be okay? Sure. Thank you. Where is his seat? A man is choosing his seat for a flight. Where is his seat? Do you have any seats available for the flight tomorrow night? Would you like to sit in regular economy or premium economy? Regular economy is fine. Hmm. Thank you for waiting. We do have a few seats. Great. I'd like an aisle seat, please. I'm afraid there are no aisle seats left. Ah,、uh, okay. Could you just not put me in the middle? Would a window seat be okay? Sure. Thank you. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait. How about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large too. Let's go see this one. Okay. Which room are they going to see? A husband and a wife are looking at some floor plans. Which room are they going to see? How about this one? It's got a nice large living room. Hmm. I like a big living room, but I want the parking space. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that's nice. Should we go see this one? Wait a second. Isn't the closet a bit too small? Good point. Hmm. There doesn't seem to be one that's perfect. Wait. How about this one? It's got everything we need, doesn't it? And the closet is pretty large too. Let's go see this one. Okay. A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel. How may I help you? Hi, I'd like to stay for one night on September twenty second. Certainly, one night from September twenty second. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non-smoking room, sir? Non-smoking. The only non-smoking room available on that day is a mountain view room. Is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an ocean view room. I'm sorry, but the only ocean view room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. 
Is there a non-smoking Ocean View room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. Which room is he going to stay in? A man is making a reservation at a hotel. Which room is he going to stay in? Seaside Hotel, how may I help you? Hi, I'd like to stay for one night on September 22nd. Certainly, one night from September 22nd. How many people? Two. Would you like a smoking or a non-smoking room, sir? Non-smoking. The only non-smoking room available on that day is a Mountain View room, is that okay? Well, I was hoping for an Ocean View room. I'm sorry, but the only Ocean View room available on that day is a smoking room. I see. Is there a non-smoking Ocean View room available on September 23rd? Yes, there is. Okay, we'll stay on September 23rd. A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi. May I help you? Hi, I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes. Welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay. What length would you like? About shoulder length. All right. And what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. How would she like to change her hair? A woman is talking to her hairstylist. How would she like to change her hair? Hi. May I help you? Hi. I've got a three o'clock reservation for Richie. Ah, yes. Welcome, Miss Richie. Please come this way. What can I do for you today? I'd like to change my hairstyle a little bit. Okay. What length would you like? About shoulder length. All right. And what about your bangs? Keep the bangs. Straight down or parted on the side? To the side a bit. Which side? Maybe a little left from the middle? Got it. We'll start with the shampoo, so please come this way. A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course. I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good, too. Oh, yeah. I love that place. And it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm. Which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early. Which job is the female student going to apply for? A male and female student are looking at job advertisements. Which job is the female student going to apply for? Hey, what do you think about this job? The hourly pay is pretty high. Sure, the pay looks great, but could you really do a newspaper delivery route? Of course. I'm good at riding bikes, but I'm worried about waking up early. What about this one? The pay isn't as high, but you can work two or three days a week and start working from the evening. Oh, this one? A supermarket cashier, huh? Well, it would be good to work after school. This one for a coffee shop might be good, too. Oh, yeah. I love that place. And it's on my way to school. Not bad, huh? Hmm. Which one should I apply to? Which two is it between? The coffee shop and the newspaper delivery route? Yeah, the pay for the newspaper route is really nice. Okay, my mind's made up. I guess I'll just have to get up early.
A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this. What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. Which dress is she going to buy? A woman is trying on a dress and talking to a shop clerk. Which dress is she going to buy? It looks very nice on you, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, it fits, but I usually wear plain colors. I'm not used to this kind of a pattern. Well, I think you look great. Yeah? Still, it would take some courage for me to actually wear this. What about this dress then? The pattern is much more reserved, so it won't feel as flashy. You're right. Let me try that one on. Go right ahead. What do you think, ma'am? This one suits me much more than the last. Do you have a long sleeved version with this design? Yes, we do. Thanks. I'll buy that. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A president and his assistant are talking on the phone. Which document is the assistant going to deliver to the sales department? Hey, could you do me a favor? There's a document on my desk, and I need you to deliver it to the sales department. Sure. Which one is it? I think it's in a blue envelope. A blue envelope? Well, there are two blue envelopes on your desk. Ah. Right there should be a red stamp in the upper right corner of the envelope. The other one should have a green stamp, but it's the orientation guide we hand out to new employees. The one with the red stamp. Okay, got it. Great. Please deliver it to the sales department by one o'clock and make sure you give it to the manager directly. You know him, right? Yes, we've met several times. Good. And while you're at it, could you deliver the other envelope to HR? Sure thing. Which document is the assistant going to deliver to the sales department? A president and his assistant are talking on the phone. Which document is the assistant going to deliver to the sales department? Hey, could you do me a favor? There's a document on my desk, and I need you to deliver it to the sales department. Sure. Which one is it? I think it's in a blue envelope. A blue envelope? Well, there are two blue envelopes on your desk. Ah, right there should be a red stamp in the upper right corner of the envelope. The other one should have a green stamp, but it's the orientation guide we hand out to new employees. The one with the red stamp. Okay, got it. Great. Please deliver it to the sales department by one o'clock and make sure you give it to the manager directly. You know him, right? Yes, we've met several times. Good. And while you're at it, could you deliver the other envelope to HR? Sure thing. A woman is calling a restaurant on the phone. At which table was she having lunch? Hello. How can I help you? Hi. I was at your restaurant for lunch today, and I think I left my scarf there. You left your scarf at the table? Do you remember where you were seated? Well, it was in the back of the restaurant. Were you in the smoking area or the non smoking area? The non smoking area. How big was your table? It was a table for four people. Okay, I'll go check.
Please wait for a moment. Thank you so much. At which table was she having lunch? A woman is calling a restaurant on the phone. At which table was she having lunch? Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I was at your restaurant for lunch today, and I think I left my scarf there. You left your scarf at the table? Do you remember where you were seated? Well, it was in the back of the restaurant. Were you in the smoking area or the non-smoking area? The non-smoking area. How big was your table? It was a table for four people. Okay, I'll go check. Please wait for a moment. Thank you so much. A man is looking for an apartment. Which apartment is he probably going to choose? Hi there, I'm looking for an apartment. Could you show me some floor plans? Sure thing. Will you be living alone? No, I'm married, and we're looking for a one-bedroom apartment with a study. Okay, how about this one? There are two rooms plus a living room. It's near a busy street, though, so it might not be very quiet. I see. I usually work at home, so I need a quiet place, and I'd prefer the living room to be square-shaped. Well, how about this one? It's located a bit far from downtown, but it's in a quiet residential area. There are two rooms and a living room, but one of the rooms is a little small. Hmm, we don't have too much stuff, so this one might work for us. We can show you another apartment with bigger rooms, but it's located further from downtown. No, thank you. Let's have a look at the second one you showed me. Which apartment is he probably going to choose? A man is looking for an apartment. Which apartment is he probably going to choose? Hi there. I'm looking for an apartment. Could you show me some floor plans? Sure thing. Will you be living alone? No, I'm married, and we're looking for a one-bedroom apartment with a study. Okay. How about this one? There are two rooms plus a living room. It's near a busy street, though, so it might not be very quiet. I see. I usually work at home, so I need a quiet place, and I'd prefer the living room to be square-shaped. Well, how about this one? It's located a bit far from downtown, but it's in a quiet residential area. There are two rooms and a living room, but one of the rooms is a little small. Hmm, we don't have too much stuff, so this one might work for us. We can show you another apartment with bigger rooms, but it's located further from downtown. No, thank you. Let's have a look at the second one you showed me. A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me, I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great! Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay. Then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write... Happy birthday. All right. Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. Which cake is she going to order? A woman is ordering a birthday cake. Which cake is she going to order? Excuse me. I'd like to order a birthday cake for my daughter. Great! Could you tell me what kind of cake you're looking for? My daughter likes chocolate, so I think a chocolate cream cake would be good. And can you put strawberries on it? Absolutely. We have round and square cakes. Which one would you prefer? Hmm. A round one, please. Okay. How old is your daughter going to be? She'll be 12. Okay. Then we'll get 12 candles ready. Do you want to write a message? Yes. Please write, Happy Birthday. All right. 
Do you want that written in pink? If so, we'll put it on a white plate. Otherwise, we can write it in white and put it on a pink plate. Please write it in pink and put it on a white plate. A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? Then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so... Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. When are they going to move? A man and a woman are discussing plans for their upcoming move. When are they going to move? I think we should decide on the moving date and call a moving company. Sounds good. I was just looking at some moving companies. I don't want to pay a lot of money. Definitely. This company here will give us a discount of 10% if we book at least one month before the moving day. One month before? Then we have to move after December 15th in order to get the discount. Yep, and there's an additional discount if we book on a weekday. A weekday? Well, I have a meeting that Monday morning, and the exhibition is on Tuesday and Wednesday, so... Friday would be good because we could then organize the new place over the weekend. Yeah, but wait a second. They say 15% off Monday to Thursday and 5% off on Friday. Well, what do you want to do? Let's go for the biggest discount. I'll be done with the exhibition by then anyway. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man is shopping during a sale. What will he buy? Excuse me, do you only sell this shirt in packs of three? We can sell them separately, but it's going to cost you more per shirt. All right, well, I don't need three of the same shirt. You know, if you buy this set of three ties, we can give you a discount on shirts so you can buy three for the price of one. I see. A set of three ties and I also get to choose three shirts for the price of one? That's right. Okay. I don't need three shirts, but I'll give the other shirts to someone else. That's a nice idea, sir. What will he buy? A man is shopping during a sale. What will he buy? Excuse me, do you only sell this shirt in packs of three? We can sell them separately, but it's going to cost you more per shirt. All right, well, I don't need three of the same shirt. You know, if you buy this set of three ties, we can give you a discount on shirts so you can buy three for the price of one. I see. A set of three ties and I also get to choose three shirts for the price of one? That's right. Okay, I don't need three shirts, but I'll give the other shirts to someone else. That's a nice idea, sir. A woman is giving a report about the sales of bags. Which bag is selling best? Here's a report on the bags that we started selling last month. First of all, when it came to color, black was the number one seller. It's followed by white and sky blue. Yellow didn't sell very well. So yellow was a dud. Well, what about the size? Bigger bags sold more than smaller ones. 
bags that could fit a magazine or a regular letter-sized notebook in them were the most popular. Okay. Regarding handles, leather was more popular than ones made with a metal chain. I see. It looks like bags with a more formal style sell better. That's right. I think we should use more neutral colors, such as beige or brown, for our new collection. Okay, then. Let's go with the beige for the next new color. You can stop the production of yellow bags. Got it. Which bag is selling best? A woman is giving a report about the sales of bags. Which bag is selling best? Here's a report on the bags that we started selling last month. First of all, when it came to color, black was the number one seller. It's followed by white and sky blue. Yellow didn't sell very well. So, yellow was a dud. Well, what about the size? Bigger bags sold more than smaller ones. Bags that could fit a magazine or a regular letter-sized notebook in them were the most popular. Okay. Regarding handles, leather was more popular than ones made with a metal chain. I see. It looks like bags with a more formal style sell better. That's right. I think we should use more neutral colors, such as beige or brown, for our new collection. Okay, then. Let's go with the beige for the next new color. You can stop the production of yellow bags. Got it. A man is calling a doctor's office. What times are available for the health checkup? Hi, I'd like to make an appointment for a health checkup. Sure. Health checkups are a bit different from standard examinations and are available only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Which day would you like? Okay, then is Saturday okay? Yes, it looks open. We're only open in the morning on Saturdays. Is that okay? Morning only? Hmm, what time are you open until on weekdays? We're open until 6 p.m. on Mondays and 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. I see. What time do you open in the morning? We open at 8 a.m. Next week, we're full all morning during the week. But if you can wait until the week after that, both Monday and Wednesday are open from 8 a.m. Well, I'll call again after I check my schedule. All right, sir. What times are available for the health checkup? A man is calling a doctor's office. What times are available for the health checkup? Hi. I'd like to make an appointment for a health checkup. Sure. Health checkups are a bit different from standard examinations and are available only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Which day would you like? Okay, then is Saturday okay? Yes, it looks open. We're only open in the morning on Saturdays. Is that okay? Morning only? Hmm. What time are you open until on weekdays? We're open until 6 p.m. on Mondays and 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. I see. What time do you open in the morning? We open at 8 a.m. Next week, we're full all morning during the week. But if you can wait until the week after that, both Monday and Wednesday are open from 8 a.m. Well, I'll call again after I check my schedule. All right, sir. A man and a woman are talking. Which one is the woman's daughter? Sorry to bother you, but could you go and get my daughter? Sure. Does she know me? Yeah. She's seen you in pictures, so she should be able to recognize you. That's helpful. So what does she look like? She has curly black hair. She's slim and taller than average. Do you have any idea what she'll be wearing? She said she'll be wearing the hat I gave her for her birthday. It's white with a black ribbon. It sounds like it will be easy enough. All right, I'll go get her now. Thank you. Which one is the woman's daughter?
A man and a woman are talking. Which one is the woman's daughter? Sorry to bother you, but could you go and get my daughter? Sure. Does she know me? Yeah. She's seen you in pictures, so she should be able to recognize you. That's helpful. So what does she look like? She has curly black hair. She's slim and taller than average. Do you have any idea what she'll be wearing? She said she'll be wearing the hat I gave her for her birthday. It's white with a black ribbon. It sounds like it will be easy enough. All right, I'll go get her now. Thank you. A man is talking with a woman about a lost wallet. Where will the man go to look for it? This is terrible. I can't find my wallet. I must have left it somewhere. What? Do you remember the last time you used it? No, I can't remember. Well then, let's try to think of where you went today. Okay, first I went to see a movie with a friend. We went to a coffee shop after that, but my friend paid so I didn't need to pull out my wallet. But did you use it when you bought the movie tickets? Yes, I definitely used it there. And later we went to the gym. After that, I realized my wallet was gone. Did you have to use your wallet at the gym? No, because the membership fee is automatically paid by credit card. But wait, I did buy some juice at the vending machine at the entrance. All right then, let's go there and look for it. Where will the man go to look for it? A man is talking with a woman about a lost wallet. Where will the man go to look for it? This is terrible. I can't find my wallet. I must have left it somewhere. What? Do you remember the last time you used it? No, I can't remember. Well then, let's try to think of where you went today. Okay, first I went to see a movie with a friend. We went to a coffee shop after that, but my friend paid so I didn't need to pull out my wallet. But did you use it when you bought the movie tickets? Yes, I definitely used it there. And later we went to the gym. After that, I realized my wallet was gone. Did you have to use your wallet at the gym? No, because the membership fee is automatically paid by credit card. But wait, I did buy some juice at the vending machine at the entrance. All right then, let's go there and look for it. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A male and a female student are talking while looking at their class schedule. What is the male student's schedule on the day of the meeting? We have to have a meeting about our next group presentation. Right. When are you free? I come to school on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I am here on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, so either Wednesday or Thursday would work. How about Thursday afternoon, then? On Thursdays, I have lectures until 4 p.m. I can make it after economics class, but then I have to be at work at 5 o'clock so I will only be available for an hour. Hmm, that sounds a bit too short. How about Wednesday, then? I have modern history at 9, then international law at 3, so I'm free in between. I have Asian history at noon, then a part-time job in the evening. What about meeting early in the morning and talking before your first class? Hmm, I'm not a morning person. Why don't we meet on Thursday evening, and I will reschedule my job for another day. Okay, sounds good. I'll meet you in the cafeteria after class. What is the male student's schedule on the day of the meeting? A male and a female student are talking while looking at their class schedule. What is the male student's schedule on the day of the meeting? We have to have a meeting about our next group presentation. Right. When are you free? I come to school on Mondays, 
Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I am here on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, so either Wednesday or Thursday would work. How about Thursday afternoon then? On Thursdays, I have lectures until 4 p.m. I can make it after economics class, but then I have to be at work at 5 o'clock. So I will only be available for an hour. Hmm, that sounds a bit too short. How about Wednesday then? I have modern history at 9, then international law at 3. So I'm free in between. I have Asian history at noon, then a part time job in the evening. What about meeting early in the morning and talking before your first class? Hmm, I'm not a morning person. Why don't we meet on Thursday evening and I will reschedule my job for another day? Okay, sounds good. I'll meet you in the cafeteria after class. A man and a woman are talking while looking at a picture. Which one is the woman's brother? I heard you have a twin brother. I didn't know that. I do, but people say we don't look alike. See, my brother is in this picture, but can you tell which one he is? Hmm, I don't see anyone who looks like you. Maybe this one with the cap? Nope, that's not him. He has black hair, just like me. Then is it this tall guy? Nope. He's not that tall. I still can't find him. You really don't look alike. I know. Maybe his glasses are making it more difficult. Glasses? Is he this one, second from the left? Yep, you found him. Do you think we look alike? No, not really. Which one is the woman's brother? A man and a woman are talking while looking at a picture. Which one is the woman's brother? I heard you have a twin brother. I didn't know that. I do, but people say we don't look alike. See, my brother is in this picture, but can you tell which one he is? Hmm, I don't see anyone who looks like you. Maybe this one with the cap? Nope, that's not him. He has black hair, just like me. Then is it this tall guy? Nope, he's not that tall. I still can't find him. You really don't look alike. I know. Maybe his glasses are making it more difficult. Glasses? Is he this one, second from the left? Yep, you found him. Do you think we look alike? No, not really. A man and a woman are talking while looking at a poll regarding kids' favorite subjects. Which chart shows the results for 15 year old kids? Hey, look at this article. It's about the three most popular subjects among 10 year old and 15 year old kids. Oh, let me see. Physical education is on the top of the 10 year olds list. Physical education is still popular even though I have heard that kids these days spend less time playing sports. Yes, and music came in second. When you get older, you become interested in different subjects. The most popular subject among the 15 year old kids is history. Right. Oh, and politics came in second. Information technology ranked third, but it wasn't even a subject in school when we were that age. What was the third most popular subject for 10 year old kids? Let's see. Oh, it was art. I wonder if they design things in art class using computer software these days. Which chart shows the results for 15 year old kids? A man and a woman are talking while looking at a poll regarding kids' favorite subjects. Which chart shows the results for 15 year old kids? Hey, look at this article. It's about the three most popular subjects among 10 year old and 15 year old kids. Oh, let me see. Physical education is on the top of the 10 year olds list. Physical education is still popular even though I have heard that kids these days spend less time playing sports. Yes, and music came in second. When you get older, you become interested in different subjects. The most popular subject among the 15 year old kids is history. Right. Oh, and politics came in second. Information technology ranked third, but it wasn't even a subject in school when we were that age. 
What was the third most popular subject for 10 year old kids? Let's see. Oh, it was art. I wonder if they design things in art class using computer software these days. There's a weather forecast on TV. What will the weather be like in the upcoming week? Here is the weather forecast for the upcoming week. The first half of the week will be mostly sunny with a chance of occasional cloudy skies. In the second half of the week, we will see overcast skies with scattered thunderstorms. As the weather takes a turn for the worse around midweek, the eastern parts of the city are most likely to be affected by these storms. The high temperatures throughout the week will be about the same as last year's average, which was 65 degrees. However, early in the week, the highs will be in the upper 60s, and later in the week, the temperatures will cool to highs in the low 60s. Low temperatures will continue to be in the low 40s, which is slightly colder than normal. The forecast for tomorrow is warm and sunny. Perfect weather for your holiday weekend. What will the weather be like in the upcoming week? There's a weather forecast on TV. What will the weather be like in the upcoming week? Here is the weather forecast for the upcoming week. The first half of the week will be mostly sunny with a chance of occasional cloudy skies. In the second half of the week, we will see overcast skies with scattered thunderstorms. As the weather takes a turn for the worse around midweek, the eastern parts of the city are most likely to be affected by these storms. The high temperatures throughout the week will be about the same as last year's average, which was 65 degrees. However, early in the week, the highs will be in the upper 60s, and later in the week, the temperatures will cool to highs in the low 60s. Low temperatures will continue to be in the low 40s, which is slightly colder than normal. The forecast for tomorrow is warm and sunny. Perfect weather for your holiday weekend. A delivery person is talking to a receptionist. What will the delivery person do next? Choose the incorrect answer. Hi, I have deliveries for the human resources and accounting departments. Sure, they're both on the fourth floor. All right, I also need to pick something up from the sales department. The sales department has a first and second division. Which one is it? Let's see, it's the second division. The sales second division is on the second floor. There's an intercom at the entrance, so please call the person you're looking for. Okay, is that the right elevator over there? I'm so sorry, but that elevator is currently out of service for a safety inspection. Do you mind using the stairs over there? Not at all. Thank you very much. What will the delivery person do next? Choose the incorrect answer. A delivery person is talking to a receptionist. What will the delivery person do next? Choose the incorrect answer. Hi, I have deliveries for the human resources and accounting departments. Sure, they're both on the fourth floor. All right, I also need to pick something up from the sales department. The sales department has a first and second division. Which one is it? Let's see, it's the second division. The sales second division is on the second floor. There's an intercom at the entrance, so please call the person you're looking for. Okay, is that the right elevator over there? I'm so sorry, but that elevator is currently out of service for a safety inspection. Do you mind using the stairs over there? Not at all. Thank you very much. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and welcome back to Top Words. Today's topic is 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. So let's go. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Hello, it's nice to meet you. You can only use this the first time that you meet someone. If you say this to somebody after you have met them already, you're going to seem either A, like you've completely forgotten meeting them, or B, like you are a very strange person for saying it's nice to meet you again. So, when you use this the first time, you can shake hands with someone and say, hello, it's nice to meet you. My name is... 
The next phrase is, my name is blah, blah, blah. In my case, my name is Alicia. You can use this again when you're introducing yourself, or if you need to reintroduce yourself, you can use this pattern. When you meet somebody at a party, for example, you can say, my name is blah, blah, blah. My name is Barbara. My name is Stevens. You can shorten this. You can say, my names. My names blah, blah, blah. I'm from after you've said your name, after you've shaken hands, you can say, I'm from the US, I'm from Japan, I'm from Turkey, I'm from your mom's house, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from a cave in southern Europe, I'm from your country, or I'm from your city. I'm from the future! Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have to go! I live in, I live in, blah blah blah. You can use your city. Uh, you can use your country, you can use, even maybe if you live near a certain station, you can use the name of the station uh, where you live. So for example, I live in America is fine. I live in Los Angeles is fine. I live in New York is fine. Uh, so your neighborhood is fine. If someone says, where do you live? And you say, I live in an apartment. It's like, hmm? <laughs> what? Uh, so please use your, the region or the location where you live, not the type of place where you live. I'm a... If you hear the question, what do you do? It, it's asking about your job. In English, people don't say, what is your job? That's not the question that we ask. Instead, the question is, what do you do? And the correct response to that is, I'm a, or I'm an, blah, 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 followed by your job title. So if someone says, what do you do? You can say, I'm a teacher. What do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a donut shop tester. I'm years old. When someone asks, how old are you? You can say, I'm blah, 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 years old. Don't forget the S at the end of this. If you like, you can shorten this phrase to just I'm plus your age. So I'm 65. <laughs> I'm 13. Whatever. I'm this many. Sometimes children will say that. How old are you? They'll say, I'm this many kind of cute. First time you meet someone, you might not ask how old are you. If it's in a friendly case, like a, in a party after you've spoken to the person a little bit, it's okay. Um, but just try to be sensitive to the context. Try to be sensitive to the people around you. And if you sense that maybe there's a very large age gap between you, it might be better just not to ask the question at all. I enjoy. Many of my students say, what is your hobby? Um, but that's not something that native speakers will say. No native speakers say, what is your hobby? Instead, we ask, uh, what do you like to do? Or what do you do in your free time? This is a much more natural question than what's your hobby? The answer to this then is I enjoy or I like plus a noun phrase. So for example, what do you like to do? I like listening to music or I enjoy listening to music. What do you do in your free time? I like watching movies. What do you do in your free time? I like baking cakes. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy tap dancing. What do you do in your free time? I enjoy making new friends. Aww. One of my hobbies is one of my hobbies is blah blah blah. With this one it's probably better to use a short easily or easy to understand hobby. If you're explaining a hobby, people are going to expect that it's going to be something that they know about, like photography or cooking or dancing or swimming or whatever. So try to pick something that will allow you to, to co continue the conversation. That's why movies or cooking or books or, you know, sports are a good thing to share. One of my hobbies is snowboarding. I've been learning English for if you are learning English, if you're studying English, you can use this expression. If someone asks you, how long have you been studying English? You can say, I've been studying English for amount of time. Or I've been learning English, or I've been practicing English, or I've been speaking English for a certain amount of time. I've been studying English since elementary school is also okay to use. Uh, I've been studying English since I was in college. Just be careful. For is used for a length of time, and since is used for a specific point in time at which you started something. So you can try and mix it up and use a few different uh, expressions there. So I've been learning English for a long time. I'm still learning English. <laughs> you should do that too. Okay. I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com. This probably could be used in response to where did you learn English or where are you studying English or how are you studying English? You can respond with, I'm learning English at EnglishClass101.com or I'm learning English at 
uh, my school. I'm learning English at uh, my private teacher's house, for example. So a little bit of grammar in this sentence. Why do we use the progressive tense, I'm learning English? If you say, I'm learning, it sounds like you're still continuing your studies. If you say, I learned English at EnglishClass101.com, it sounds like you're finished. Uh, like you, you've finished studying, there's nothing else for you to study, uh, so you're done. Um, so it's it's much, much more natural to actually use the progressive I'm learning or I'm studying uh, when you're talking about your studies, when you're talking about your hobbies, um, than it is to say I learned or I studied. End. End, end, end. Uh, so those were 10 lines that you need to introduce yourself and to help give the other person a little bit of information and carry the conversation forward. So please try them. Please go crazy with them. Make them your own. Thanks very much for joining us for this episode of Top Words, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. I'm from your neighbor's doghouse. Fish. Glum, glum. Oh, yes, I like to go spelunking in North Africa every summer. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful, and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask a really basic question in a polite but natural way. How old are you? In your English textbook, one of the first lessons may have been how to ask someone's age by saying just, how old are you? However, in many English language cultures, asking an adult's age directly, particularly a woman's age, is not polite. If you suddenly ask, how old are you, to someone you've just met, they'll understand you, but they might not be too happy about answering such a blunt and direct question. So, how do you find out someone's age without offending them? You just add a magic phrase to the beginning of the question. This phrase is, do you mind me asking? This is an incredibly useful phrase that you should definitely memorize. It comes in handy whenever you want to ask a question that may be a little personal or come across as a little too direct. Native speakers of English use it all the time. So, the full question would be, do you mind me asking how old you are? Be sure to pay attention to the word order of this sentence. Rather than, do you mind me asking how old are you? It's, do you mind me asking how old you are? The answer to this can be simple. I'm 25 years old. Or just, I'm 25. Or it can be a little more detailed. If you've just had a birthday, you can say, I've just turned 25. Or, if you're about to have a birthday, you can say, I'll turn 25 this month, or I'll turn 25 in July. It's more natural here not to give your exact birthday, like July the 9th, but just the month. So again, to turn this question back on the asker and find out his or her age, all you have to do is use that other magic phrase we introduced in previous lessons, how about you? Here, it's okay not to worry about being polite since the other person asked you the question first. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. We mentioned that asking someone's age might not be polite, but if you do decide to ask this question, here's another tip. Some people like to reply with another question. How old do you think I am? Be careful. If you say an age that's older than the person's true age, they might be very offended. So it's always safer to say a number lower than what you actually think. So if you think the person looks 40, say 35 and see how happy they look. See you next time. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everybody, welcome back to English Topics. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by... Davy. Hi Davy. So today, our topic is going to be how to start a conversation in English. So both of us have tried to prepare a few tips uh, that might help you as you try to start conversations uh, in your English language studies. So let's begin. Do you want to start first again? Oh, okay. I'll start, I can All right, start first. I'll start. Okay, I'll okay, start. go first. This, we're giving tips on how to start a conversation. Mm -hmm. I will start today. My first tip, very important, I'm trying to follow myself right now, don't be shy. Very important tip. 
Uh, this isn't really so much a language learning tip. Well, it doesn't seem like a language learning tip, but I think it really is because whenever you communicate uh, in a second language or a foreign language, it can be really nerve wracking. It can make you very nervous and very anxious to try and do that, and especially if you're talking to someone for the first time. Uh, and so the first thing is just to remind yourself that it's not a big deal and to not be shy and be confident. And if you can maintain that attitude as you begin to talk to, talk to someone, it will be much easier, mm -hmm. I think. I agree. I agree. Or Thank even, you. like you say, mm -hmm. even if you are shy, just pretend that you're not shy. That's a good tip. You know, it's like even if you can just pretend just for a few minutes just to start the conversation or to continue a conversation a little bit, it can be good, even if you feel shy. I agree. And you mm -hmm. might find, too, oftentimes people who would say that they are shy when they talk to someone in another language they can have a different personality it's mm -hmm. a chance to have a different personality in a different language mm -hmm. um, so if you tell yourself that too uh, when you speak english when you speak another language you're more confident than you are when you speak your own language yeah that's Maybe. true i've heard that before actually mm -hmm. people who say that they feel like they're more outgoing when they speak english if that's the case maybe that's good for you also, just in general, another point about um, maybe not only starting conversations, but continuing them. Um, we're comfortable, English language speakers are, with interruptions to some point. Like, you shouldn't always yeah, interrupt the other speaker. But they are pretty comfortable with it. See, he just mm -hmm. did it. So, we're, we're kind of, we're very comfortable with it. So, you don't need to wait for an invitation to speak in a conversation. You can just join in or maybe agree with the person who's speaking or disagree with the person who's speaking as a way to join a conversation that's already in progress. Yeah, nice one, that's a good one. Okay, I have? will share a tip. Mine are a little bit, I don't know, they're very dependent on maybe who you're talking to, uh, maybe what your relationship is. So, let's say for this one, you are in a place where like a, I don't know, a restaurant or a bar or something, and you don't know the person you'd like to speak to, but maybe, I don't know, there's someone attractive you'd like to speak to, or maybe you want to speak with the bartender, something. So uh, maybe, okay, maybe this is better if you're trying to speak to a fellow customer. So I have, it's, so, it's sort of small, make a simple comment about something happening in the surroundings. So this should be uh, one, a, a simple comment, uh, two, something that the other person can clearly see, and three, something that you can agree on easily. So, for example, if somebody uh, has just walked by the restaurant wearing like a crazy hat, I don't know, you could say like, oh, did you see that guy? Something like that. Something that it's easy to agree on to initiate the conversation. Or maybe, I don't know, there's a TV in the bar. Um, like, whoa, did you see that play? Or something that maybe you can identify that you maybe shared with the other person um, during the time you've been in that space together. So this should be a very simple comment. Don't make a weird comment here. Make it, make it very, very relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, create a relaxed environment that the other person feels they can join in easily. Mm. That's a very good tip. I don't know. I'm trying to think of maybe a time that I used this. Or maybe I wanted to make a comment, like, and there was another person that happened to be there, and we had a moment where we agreed on something, right. but then the conversation didn't really continue. Yes. So it's kind of a good way to test and see if that other person wants to speak to you, too. Yes, yeah. Mm. That's a good point. And it makes me think, this isn't one of my tips. This is an ex a free tip. You're getting a free freebie tip now. Is I think... Uh, tips everywhere. They're everywhere. They're flying around. <laughs> so is, many tips. Uh, to be, be patient, wait for your opening too, because mm -hmm. you might want to talk to this person next to you, but if you just butt in with a question out of nowhere, it might seem very strange. But if you wait and have, have a moment, wait for that guy with the funny hat to walk yeah. by, and then you have your opening, then you have an, a natural point mm -hmm. uh, that you can enter the, uh, a conversation with someone. Yeah, and uh, I think... So be patient. Totally. And going back to your point about not being shy, like don't 
be so focused on waiting for that moment that you just pick something really strange. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like if I like walked up to you, I don't know you in a bar, and was like, "Did you hear that noise?" Yes. <laughs> it's like that's a really strange, a strange question. question. Maybe he did hear that noise, but that's a really strange yeah. question um, to introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so... This actually all this all, this kind of relates to to my my second tip, which okay. is very similar to 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 your tip yeah. about uh, making an a kind of comment was ask an indirect question. And I noticed a lot of the comments, your, your tip was to make a comment, but a lot of your comments, the examples you gave are questions, mm, right? That's true. And importantly, I think that those questions should be kind of indirect questions. For example, if I'm standing at the bus stop and I want to start a conversation with someone else standing at the bus stop, let's say it's very, very hot. But if I turn to that person and say, do you think it's hot? <laughs> that's very strange. <laughs> but if I say something like, oh, it's pretty hot today, right? You know, that's a little bit more casual, a little bit more informal. Yeah. Um, you, you don't want to scare people with these very direct questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. That's true. And, and even, even a question, that's a great example. <laughs> do you think it's hot is a really weird question. Very strange question. <laughs> but, but again, keeping or giving people that opportunity to agree with you. Like yes. you're, you're throwing a little opinion out there. It's hot, right? Oh yeah, it's hot. That's true. That's a really, really good one. I totally agree. Or, and I, but I think for that exact same reason, I've had some people come up to me and they, they try to begin a conversation with, how are you? And I'm like, <laughs> no, that's, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's an introduction that you use for people that you already know. Yes. Um, so don't try to start a conversation with, how are you? It sounds too familiar and it's a little confusing to yeah. the person. Strangers don't always want to tell you how they are. That's true. What if I'm bad? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> what if I feel bad that day? Yeah. So don't use how are you to introduce yourself. Nice one. Okay. okay what do you have next? Um, actually, okay. Maybe this is somewhat related to the one you just um, mentioned. Okay. Um, I've got, okay, this is maybe in a, like a party or a social event situation. I have energetically introduce yourself and ask a question about where you are. Um, mm. So this might be a little specific, but if you go to a social event where you're there to meet people and to speak to people, if you go up to someone and you just introduce yourself with a big smile and say, Hi, my name is Alicia. Have you ever been to one of these events before? Something like that can get the conversation started. Um, but again, this is, I feel like it's a tip that's good in a place where um, maybe everyone is there for a similar purpose. If you do that, like, on, to use your example, at the bus station, it's a little bit weird. Or if you're, if you're just in public, you pass someone on the street, it's a little strange to yeah. just walk up and introduce someone energetically. Um, but if you're in a location where you have this chance, um, there are a couple of nice little introductory questions you could use um, for events. Like, I don't, that's one that I would, I've used. Like, hi, is this your first time mm -hmm. here? Or um, who do you know at this party? Yes, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, how did you find out about this event? Yeah. That sort of thing. Also, a similar kind of question in those situations is asking someone for help or for information mm -hmm. because it lets that other person know that you're not a, a scary or threatening person in that situation either. If you're asking for help, you know, oh, can you can you tell me where the kitchen is? I need to put this in the refrigerator, something like that. And then that, that shows the other person that you're not you're not an expert on this. You're asking for their help. And that kind of gives people uh, an easy thing to engage you on, mm -hmm. an easy thing to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Asking for help can be a nice way too. Yeah, that's a good point, I think, asking for help. It also kind of puts you in a slightly vulnerable position. Absolutely. It makes you seem a little bit like, oh, I need help, so, mm -hmm. you know, please take care of me. It's a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's a good tip too, I think. Okay. Uh, I think we're on to number three for you. We are. Uh, my last one is a very important one. This comes at the end, though, is uh, don't take it personally if the person doesn't want to talk. A lot of times, if you try and start a conversation with a stranger, they don't always want to talk to you. People try and talk. Stranger tries to talk to me. I might be very busy. I might have had a bad day. I may not want to talk to them. That doesn't mean that they're a bad person or they can't speak English or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So if you have that experience, you know, my first tip was don't be shy. You might be very nervous about starting a conversation with someone. And then you work up the courage. You go and you ask them a question and they don't want to talk to you. That's okay. Don't take it personally. Uh, it has nothing to do with you. Um, you know, you can find someone else to talk to. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And I think that's especially important because especially 
depending on the culture that you're from, you might have heard like, oh, English speakers, particularly Americans, are so friendly or so outgoing. But, and, but you know, if a stranger tries to speak to me or to you, maybe we're going to ignore you on the street because we don't know who that person is. Or, you know, maybe like you say, we've had a bad day or whatever it is. There are so many reasons not to want to talk to a person that you don't know. So mm -hmm. don't be offended. Don't be sad. Don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Don't. Don't think that, oh, my, my English is so bad, this person didn't want to talk to me. Don't think that. That It could be any, any other reason why someone doesn't want to mm -hmm. talk to you. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Nice tip. That's really important. Okay. Then we will move on maybe to my last one. Uh, okay. So for my last one, this is maybe uh, among people that you have some acquaintance with. So maybe uh, you're not super close to them, but you've seen them before. Uh, or maybe it's coworkers you're not super close to. But anyway, you'd like to make your relationship with those people deeper. You can share a story about something you did recently, something interesting, a small short story. Don't tell a long 10-minute story about, I don't know, going shopping for milk on the weekend. That's, that's boring. But something interesting that you did relatively recently that maybe they can find something of interest or something of value in. So maybe you found a new restaurant that was good. Maybe you went to a concert and that was exciting. Maybe you met someone interesting. So if there's something that you can share about yourself that the other person might find valuable, that's a good way um, to, to initiate conversation. Yeah. Mm, so. on, on that point, if I can add another another free tip. Oh my gosh. On on that note, it made me think. You spoke earlier about being vulnerable. Asking mm -hmm. uh, asking for help can show that you're vulnerable. Tell an embarrassing story. That's good too. Don't don't brag. Don't talk about this great new car that you bought. No one wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you you lost your car keys immediately after you bought your new car. Mm -hmm. Tell an embarrassing story. Tell something that will make the person laugh and will make you um, be vulnerable and, and look like a, a normal person. That's true. That's true. Like telling, actually, that's a good strategy. It's called self-deprecation. Mm. So making, it means to make yourself look bad or to put yourself in a lower status, a lower position. And mm -hmm. it can be very effective for making friends and like making people laugh. Uh, I totally do this. It's it's actually a lot of fun when you think about it. Like a story about something bad happening is oftentimes more interesting than a story about something good happening. That's true. Mm. So all the best comedies are about terrible, terrible things happening. happening. <laughs> yeah. So if you have something like a little yeah, like you lost your car keys or you had some kind of funny episode where maybe you don't look like the hero of the story, that's a really good one to share. Have you had anything happen to you recently? Oh my gosh, I probably have. I lost my bag. I just came back from uh, traveling in Europe and my bag got lost between Dubai Airport and Tokyo Airport. Oh, no. And so my bag didn't uh, arrive. So I had to go two days without any of my clothes or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I finally got my bag, I was like, yay, I got it from the, I got it from the delivery guy. I was so happy. I opened it up and then like my sunscreen had exploded oh, inside no. my bag. I was like, <sighs> at least I have my objects. Like, I have my clothes and things. And they so. won't get sunburned. Exactly. Now I won't sunburn any of my clothes. So yeah. So, I mean, it's like a small, relatable, oh, that moped, <laughs> small, relatable story. Uh, that maybe yeah, someone else can identify like, oh, that happened to me one time and then the conversation rolls from there. So nice tip. Nice tip. Okay. Are you out of, are you out of free tips? Are those all your free tips? That's, that's all for today. For conversation that's, that's, starters? That's all I get today. We can't continue this conversation. <laughs> that's a different subject. All right. Well, we'll finish there for today. Thanks very much for joining us for this episode of English Topics. Davy, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, if you liked this video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as well. Also, if you want to find more content like this, please make sure to check us out at EnglishClass101.com. If you have any ideas for how to start a conversation um, that you use, please make sure to leave it in a comment too so we can check it out. Thanks very much for watching this episode and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today we're gonna to be talking about the top 25 English phrases. So let's get started. The first phrase is hello. Hello, of course, is used as a greeting. You can greet your friends, you can greet your coworkers, your family with this phrase just by saying hello. Hey, hi, what's up? Hello, sup, yo. Pretty much any time of day you can use hello. Hello, 
The next phrase is good morning. Good morning is used as a greeting in the morning. You can kind of feel when morning ends for you. Good morning is nice and polite. Or even just morning with your close friends or close co-workers. The next phrase is good night. Good night is fine. We don't use this to greet other people. We use it when we're saying goodbye to other people at night. Uh, family members, particularly mothers and fathers, to say good night to their children before they put them to bed. You can say it to your friend in a text message or in an email if you've been talking for a while. Good night. So the next word to talk about is goodbye. Uh, use it when you say goodbye to your friends, when you leave your friends. Goodbye. Bye, of course. Take care. Have a nice day. Peace out. That's another way to say goodbye. Okay, the next phrase is I'm plus your name. Of course, this is a way to introduce yourself. You can use I'm, in my case, Alicia. I'm Alicia to introduce yourself in any situation. New friend, I'm Alicia. Okay, the next phrase is what's your name? What's your name is used to ask someone else what their name is. So, what is your name sounds a bit... Try to use what's your name. If you forget someone's name, you can say sorry, what's your name? Or sorry, what's your name again? Next phrase is nice to meet you. Nice to meet you anytime you meet someone new. Nice to meet you is fine. Good to meet you is a little more casual. Great to meet you sounds very excited. Pleasure to meet you sounds like uh, maybe a formal situation or a business context. Okay, the next phrase is how are you? How are you? Is an, it's just a friendly way to check in with the other person. You can use it with friends, your family, your coworkers, maybe even your boss to a certain degree. Uh, how are ya? How you doing? The next phrase is I'm fine, thanks, and you? Uh, if you saw English in three minutes, we talked a lot about this phrase. Uh, instead of I'm fine, thank you, and you, say I'm good, thanks. How are you? Just shorten it, make it a little bit more natural. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. How are you? Not so good. How are you? Okay. And so on. So when someone says, how are you? Offer, I usually say, I'm good. This week, I blah, blah, blah. Give some information about what you've been up to. Maybe a hobby, something that you did recently, an event, something interesting you saw, whatever. People want to make that connection with you and it's a good chance for you to continue speaking. The next word is please. Please is a polite phrase used when you want something from someone else. You can use this as a response when someone offers you something, like in a restaurant, for example. Would you like more water? Would you like something to drink? Oh, please. The next phrase is thank you. Thank you is used to express your appreciation. You can use thank you with everybody. The next phrase is you're welcome, you're welcome. When someone says thank you, you can say you're welcome. Ah, no biggie, I use no biggie as in no biggie is short for no big problem. The next word is yes. Yes, of course, yes means is any positive expression. Someone asks you a question and the answer is a positive answer. You say yes, yep, uh-huh, yeah. We. Oui. <laughs> no. Next, I'm guessing I know it. Yep. The next word is no. No is a negative response to something when you have to give a negative answer. So as you can probably guess, um, the long form of no is negative. I like to use nope. It's very, very casual. Not gonna happen. My parents would use that with me. To soften that a little bit, if you want to show a negative response to something, like let's go out for dinner tonight. What do you want to do? Like, do you want to go out? Mm, not really. Mm, no, I don't think so, mm, to soften it. The next word is okay, okay. This word comes from copy editors. Okay, when they had to check a manuscript, um, they had to label the manuscript all clear, A-C, but because they were copy editors and they have a very, very sick sense of humor, they thought they would mark it okay for all clear to make a joke because O and K do not start all and clear, but it caught on among everybody in the world. <laughs> Anyway, okay uh, is used to agree with somebody else. Well, it can be used actually to express a positive or kind of a slight negative, I feel. Transitioning in your conversation, you can say, okay, now we're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next phrase is excuse me. Excuse me, it's used to get someone's attention in English when you don't know the other person. For example, in a store, a supermarket, maybe a stranger on the street, you need to ask directions. You can use excuse me. You can use excuse me in the supermarket. Excuse me, can you tell me where the hot sauce is? If you've done something rude in public, you can use excuse me. I personally do not do rude things in public ever. <laughs> I'm sorry is the next word we're gonna talk about. I'm sorry is used to apologize when you have made a mistake or someone you know has made a mistake and you're connected to it or you just feel bad, you can use I'm sorry. You made a mistake at work, I'm sorry. You forgot to feed your cat, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. You bump someone next to you. Oh, sorry. What time is it is the next phrase when you need to check what time it is. What time is it? When you ask someone else what time it is, maybe you say this to yourself too. Check your watch, check your phone, check a clock. Pretty straightforward phrase. There aren't really any short versions, so. That's an easy one. <laughs> Where is the plus a location? So you can use this for um, a building or a store. We don't, we're not gonna use this where is the for a place, a city name or a state name or a country name. To do that, you would need to remove the. But where is the bank? Where is the post office? You can use this to ask directions, to ask for help in your house or at work. Where is the copy machine? Where is the file I need? Where is the blah, blah, blah? Where is the bathroom is perhaps a very important question to know. The next one is, may I use the restroom? May I use the restroom is a polite uh, and soft expression that you can use if you need to use the toilet, you need to use the washroom. When you're at someone's house for the very first time, when you're in a place that you're that is new to you, you can and ask, may I use the restroom? More casually, can I go to the bathroom? To be very polite, you could say, may I go to the bathroom? The next phrase is, I would like to order something. You can use this at a restaurant probably, or in any situation where you need to place an order. I'd like a pizza. I'd like a beer. Can I get the check, please? This will be used at a restaurant. When you've finished your meal and it's time to go, can I get the check, please? In a very, very casual situation, you can just say, check, please, that's fine. The next phrase is, see you soon. See you soon is used with friends and family members, perhaps, uh, when you expect to see them again soon after saying goodbye to them. This is used at the end of the conversation. You're going separate directions. You say, see you soon. See ya is also good, or just see you. To make it a little more formal, you can say, I'll see you again soon. Make a full sentence out of it that way. The next phrase is see you later. See you later is very similar to see you soon, but the point is with see you later is that you're probably going to meet that person again later on in the same day. The last phrase is really. Really is a very useful word because you can use it to show you're interested in a conversation with upward intonation. Really, really, tell me more. Or to show that you're not so interested in the conversation with downward intonation, really. So there are many other words that you can use similar to really in this way, like seriously or oh, oh, and so on. So it's a really good practice for your intonation. Uh, so those are 25 very common words uh, and phrases in English. If you liked this video, if you like this topic, um, please subscribe. Um, I'm sure there'll be a button here somewhere, or a button here, wherever. Um, but please be sure to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be doing more videos like this and we already have more videos like this. So please be sure to check them out. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Really? Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. Okay, I see. Great. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Mm, gratitude <laughs> subjects. What are we having for dinner tonight? Pizza? Affirmative. I'll riff on that. I am Chris Hardwick. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hi! How's it going? I'm Alicia. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn new, more common ways to ask and answer the question, how are you, in English. You've probably learned, how are you, and I'm fine, in textbooks before, but in the United States, people will usually ask this question and answer it in a different way. First, let's review. If someone says, how are you? You can say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Here are some other ways to answer. Pretty good. This means about the same thing as, I'm fine. Pretty good. We also have, not bad. You can use this if you are feeling just okay or so-so. Not bad. Let's look at our question again. How are you? This is the most well-known way of asking how someone is. You could use it when you want to be polite. But now, let's look at some different ways to ask how someone is. These ways are more casual and much more common. First, Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You can answer this in many ways. If you're feeling good, you can say, good. Good. Pretty good. 
Pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Once more. Good. Pretty good. Not bad. Here's a tip. Even though these answers mean the same thing as I'm fine, you can't answer how's it going with I'm fine. It will sound a bit strange. If you're not feeling good, you can say not so good. Not so good. Not great. Not great. Or not so well. Not so well. Be careful. If you say one of these, the other person will usually ask, why? What's wrong? To be polite. Then you will have to explain. Another casual but very common version of how are you is what's up? What's up? To reply, use a cheerful voice as you say, not much, not much, or nothing much, nothing much. This means you're free and able to chat. Since what's up is just another way of saying hello, you can also reply with hey or hi. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. A lot of the time, when we ask questions that mean, how are you, in English, we're not actually asking about the other person's health, we're only asking to be polite. You should think of these questions as another way of saying, hello, a way for the conversation to get started, instead of actual, literal questions. In fact, when someone asks you, what's up, you don't even have to answer. Just say, what's up? in reply. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's job is in natural English. Of course, you can just say, what is your job? This is correct English, but it sounds too direct and awkward. Native English speakers almost never say this in a social situation. Instead, they use a different question. But before we master that, we need to compare it to a very similar question. What are you doing? I'm presenting a video about English. What do you do? I'm an English teacher. Do you see the difference? These two questions, what are you doing and what do you do, sound similar but mean different things. The first one is asking what you are doing right now, this minute. You answer it using an ing verb. What are you doing? I'm reading. I'm watching TV, while the second is actually a shortened version of what do you do for a living? This is how we ask what is your job in natural English. Let's practice this question. What do you do? What do you do? When native speakers of English ask this question, it can come out very fast and sound more like what do you do? In order to tell it apart from what are you doing? Just listen for the ing sound on the end of the question. If it's not there, then you're being asked what your job is. So how would you answer this question? Just think of it as if the other person is asking you, what is your job? You could answer with, I am, plus your job. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Or, I'm an engineer. If you want to learn more job names, go to EnglishClass101.com and check out the core word lists. These cover job vocabulary and more, and include a picture and audio to help you perfect your pronunciation. You can also mention the place that you work at, starting with, I work at. I work at a hospital. I work at a hospital. I work at a law firm. I work at a law firm. If you work for a big company that is well known, you can say, I work for, and then the name. I work for Microsoft. I work 
for Microsoft. I work for the New York Times. I work for the New York Times. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. When you ask the question, what do you do? And the other person tells you their job, it's polite to make some kind of positive comment about his or her job. For example, how interesting, or that must be exciting, or even, oh, really? Remember to sound sincere. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, Alicia here. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's hobbies are without using the word hobbies. You've probably seen the question, do you have any hobbies? Or, what are your hobbies? in an English textbook before. However, native English speakers almost never use the word hobbies when asking about them. A much more natural way to ask the same question is, what do you do for fun? Let's practice this question. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? You can also ask, what do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? So, how would you answer this question? Let's look at how native speakers would do it. The easiest way is to say, I like to, or just, I like, followed by what you like to do. For example, if you like watching movies, you could say, I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. I like to watch movies or I like watching movies. And if you like golf, you could say, I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. You can emphasize how much you like your hobby by adding a word like really in front of like. For example, I really like watching movies. On the other hand, if you want to play down how much you like something, you can say kind of. For example, I kind of like playing tennis. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you don't have any special hobbies or don't want to be specific, a good way to reply is, I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. Just use I like and add hanging out with my friends and then add and stuff like that. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. This series explains some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some different ways people will ask you, where are you from? First, though, where are you from can mean many things. It can mean, what city are you from? Or, what state are you from? In fact, Americans ask this question to each other all the time to learn what part of America the other person comes from. Of course, though, it can also mean, what country are you from? If you want to answer this question, there are two ways to do it. You can say, I'm plus your nationality, as in, I'm Japanese, or I'm Brazilian. Or you can say, I'm from plus the country you are from, as in, I'm from Italy, or I'm from Thailand. If you're from a really famous city or place, you can say that too. For example, I'm from Beijing, or I'm from New Delhi. 
Many times, though, Americans won't ask, "What country are you from?" or even, "Where are you from?" In many casual situations, they will say it in a simpler way, "Where are you from?" This is just like, "Where are you from?" but they take out the "are." Where are you from? You can use this too in casual situations. Of course, in the United States, as in other parts of the world, people may be a little more indirect because they want to be polite. To do this, they might ask you if you are from the place where they meet you. For example, if you meet someone in New York, they might ask, "Are you from New York?" Or if you are in San Diego, they might ask, "Are you from San Diego?" Many parts of the United States are very multicultural, so asking the question this way avoids what could be an embarrassing mistake. You can answer this the same way you answer, "Where are you from?" Just add a simple "no" in front. For example, you can say "no" plus "I'm." Plus nationality, no, I'm French, or no, plus I'm from, plus country, no, I'm from Russia. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. Since the United States is very large, people you meet may take great pride in the place or region they come from. If you ask someone about where they're from. They may respond by saying something like West Coast or the East Coast or California or the South or the Midwest. If they answer in this way, it usually means they are interested in talking more about their region and how it differs from others. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in Three Minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. This series will teach you some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some new ways to ask someone, "What's your name?" including one that you can use when you have forgotten someone's name. Now, what is your name? Was probably one of the first questions you learned when you started studying English. I have to tell you though that most native speakers of English would never say this. In English, just like in other languages, it is often more polite to be a little indirect. Of course, the easiest way to avoid asking the question directly is to not ask at all. Just introduce yourself, and most people will respond by doing the same. When introducing yourself, simple is nearly always best. Just say, "Hi, I'm Alicia." To show that you want to know the other person's name, just add "and you" at the end. Hi, I'm Alicia. And you? Hi, I'm Alicia. And you? Just like before, take out my name, Alicia, and put your name in its place. After you say this, the other person will tell you his or her name. Okay, now let's talk about an embarrassing situation that happens to everybody. You have already met this person once before, but you have forgotten their name. The most polite thing to do in this situation is to apologize and ask again. There's a simple way to do this that's also polite. I'm sorry. What was your name again? I'm sorry. What was your name again? This sentence is very similar to "What's your name?" but it has three important differences. First, we say "I'm sorry." A small apology can go a long way. After that, we say "What was your name?" This is just like "What is your name?" but instead of "is," we use the past tense "was." This is really important as it tells the other person that you remember meeting them. 
You haven't forgotten him or her. You have just forgotten the name. This little word makes all the difference. I'm sorry. What was your name? Finally, we add again to the end. This is another hint that tells the other person that you remember learning his or her name before, but you just can't recall it right now. I'm sorry. What was your name again? This phrase is appropriate for both formal and informal situations. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. In the United States, it's normal to address people by name in conversation more than once. In both formal and informal situations, it's a way to show respect or interest in the other person and can help you make friends. It is also a great way to practice someone's name so you don't forget it. If you are talking to someone named Anne, for example, instead of just, what do you do for fun? You could say, Anne, what do you do for fun? You can also put the name at the end of the sentence. What do you do for fun, Anne? You don't want to say the person's name too often or it will sound a little strange. But if you practice someone's name like this, you won't forget it. And people love to hear their own name. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn some ways to get in touch with someone after you have met them once already. In a lot of textbooks, you've probably seen the question, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? It's a very useful question, but there are two problems with it. First, it can sound a little too direct, especially when talking to members of the opposite sex. And second, people use the phone a lot less these days than they used to. Instead, they might prefer to connect by email or on a social network like Facebook. To start, though, a simple variation on what's your phone number that sounds a little less direct is, could I get your number? Could I get your number? We start the sentence with could, which softens the request. Next say I, then get, and finally your number, which is short for your phone number. This question is slightly casual, but it can be used in almost any situation. Recently, Many people prefer to use email rather than the phone to communicate. Asking someone for his or her email address is also a little less direct than asking for their phone number. Could I get your email address? Could I get your email address? We just took could I get your number and replaced number with email address. It's that simple. Could I get your email address? If someone asks you either of these questions, you can reply by saying, Sure, my phone number is... Sure, my phone number is... Or, Sure, my email address is... Sure, my email address is... Or, Sure, it's... And then say your phone number or email address at the end. By the way, if you're having any trouble with numbers, check out EnglishClass101.com's core word lists for these and other key vocabulary words. Each word comes with a picture, audio samples so you can perfect your pronunciation, and sample sentences and phrases so you can master its use in a sentence. Recently, many people use social networks like Facebook or LinkedIn or an online chatting service like Skype to communicate. People might ask you about these, especially if they are younger. If someone wants to connect with you through one of these services, they may simply ask, Are you on? followed by the name of the service. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Facebook? Are you on LinkedIn? 
Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on Skype? Are you on Skype? To answer, you can simply say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. If you respond with, yes, I am, the other person may ask how they can connect with you on one of these services. Of course, if you're not on one of these services, they won't be able to contact you. If you still would like to stay in touch with the person, though, you can say, no, but my email address is, or no, but my phone number is, and then say your email address or phone number. By telling the other person a different way they can contact you, you'll show them that you want to hear from them. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you ask someone for their phone number, their email address, or some other form of contact information, they will usually give it to you if you have gotten to know them a little beforehand. If you ask too early in the conversation, though, they may be hesitant about sharing that information. The key is to make sure you talk for some time before requesting this kind of personal information. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful, and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask and say where you live. Usually, someone will ask you where you live as a polite question after they've asked you your name, where you're from, and what you do for a living. They'll say, so, where do you live? This is inviting you to keep making conversation. There are lots of ways you could answer this question, but here are some of the most common. You could say, do you know, and then the name of the area you live in. Do you know Twin Pines? Or you could mention a local landmark, like near the library, near the movie theater. You could also answer by telling the person what train line you live on if your city has a train network, or what station is the nearest to your house. On the green line, near Central Station. So as you can see, there are lots of possible ways to answer the question, where do you live? Once you've told them, the other person might respond in one of the following ways. Oh yeah, I know it. I live near there. Or maybe, I'm afraid I don't know it. The other person is just being polite by showing interest, so you can reply by saying something like, Oh, really? Since the other person is asking you this question to be polite, a good way to continue the conversation is to ask them the same question in return. You can just say, How about you? Or, where do you live? Put some stress on the you. Where do you live? Now it's time for Alicia's advice. Asking where someone lives is a way to try to find something you have in common with the person you're talking to. So if you're familiar with the area the other person lives in, make some comments about it. That's a really nice area. Or, the park there is really pretty. Anything is fine, as long as you don't say anything negative that could be taken as offensive, like, that area has a high crime rate, or, I hear that area is really dangerous. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in 3 Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask someone where they went to school or college. Asking someone where they went to college is a good small talk question and conversation starter. However, you have to be careful not to offend people if they didn't go to college. We'll tell you how to do this. The question is simple. If the other person is over 22, it's likely they will have left college already, so you ask using the past tense. Where did you go to college? You could also say, where did you go to school? In American English, depending on context, school often means the same as college. If the other person is British or European, however, they're more likely to say, where did you go to university? The answer to this question is really easy. All you say is, I went to university in city. 
I went to Southern Oregon University in Ashland. If the name of the city or town is part of the university's name, like Tokyo University or Oxford University, you can add the name of the country instead. I went to Tokyo University in Japan. Once you've heard the other person's answer, it's polite to make some kind of comment. For example, wow, that's a really famous university. Or just, oh, really? Sometimes, when you ask, where did you go to college, the other person might reply, I didn't go to college. In this situation, you should be careful how you reply so as not to appear rude. It's polite to not act surprised, but instead make a positive comment like, oh, really? Or ask a question like, did you go straight into a job? Now it's time for Alicia's advice. A good follow up question to keep the conversation going is to ask the other person, What did you study? or What was your major? This gives them an opportunity to talk about something they're interested in. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to ask another basic question about the other person, which often features in first time conversations between native speakers. That's, Do you have any brothers or sisters? See you next time! <laughs>